zacznę tego postawię. Chyba, że... Chyba, że... Chyba, że jest drugie wyjście słuchawkowe w tej stacji, ale nie sądzę. Jeden, dwa, trzy. Jeden, dwa, trzy. Jeden, dwa, trzy.
Najlepiej teraz możemy mówić, bo zobacz, uczestniczy, nie, nie będą Cię słyszeć, czyli jest to moment. Bądźmy jednak czujne. Dobra, czyli on zaraz rozpocznie, Pan Dyrektor. Dobrze, to tak musimy zrobić, wiesz co, że tak jakoś musimy to podzielić. Czekaj, tutaj jest ta... Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are meeting during the kickoff meeting, uh, which starts uh, a project uh, implemented under technical uh, cooperation of the International Agency for uh, Atomic Energy. The, the, uh, the title is uh, Promoting Safety Culture and Enhancing the Quality Assurance and Quality Control Capability of Nuclear Medicine Departments. This is a project addressed uh, to people who operate in the field of nuclear medicine. Under this project, uh, we are also uh, planning a very close cooperation between the uh, Vienna Agency, Agency for the National, uh, uh, sorry, National Atomic uh, Energy Agency. Um, people who operate in the nuclear medicine, uh, that is, we will involve the National Consult Consultant for Nuclear Medicine uh, and uh, the Ministry uh, for Health. Uh, so uh, these are the key beneficiaries of the project. Of course, there will be some uh, direct beneficiaries that uh, are the nuclear medicine facility that will take part in this project. This project will involve implementation and improvement of uh, quality control issues uh, in uh, nuclear medicine. Uh, the quality control translates each type of uh, quality control uh, will be perceived as the exposure size, uh, uh, exposure uh, to ionizing uh, radiation. So we will be dealing uh, with the intended uh, exposure and incidental exposure. So who is this meeting for? And the uh, results uh, will be for all specialists 
who are involved uh, in the issues of quality control, who are uh, employed by the nuclear medicine uh, departments. And during this meeting, uh, you will be able to listen to um, speeches, uh, lectures uh, uh, delivered uh, by uh, both uh, Polish experts and an expert uh, of the International uh, Agency for Atomic uh, Energy. During this meeting, uh, we will uh, also define uh, the timetable, the schedule of this project. As you know, a lot has changed since the time of endorsement uh, of uh, the contract to deliver this project, agreement to deliver this project. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I uh, have to address some technical issues. So a lot has changed, uh, changed uh, outside, and even the form of this meeting has been uh, changed completely. I would also like to inform you that this meeting, apart uh, from this online uh, form of communication, uh, is also streamed uh, via internet. You can watch it on YouTube. Uh, uh, it's available both in Polish and English version, so all uh, Polish speeches uh, are um, streamed uh, uh, with uh, translation uh, into English. For people uh, who communicate in English. I would also uh, like uh, to address uh, some uh, formal uh, introductions. I would like to welcome our distinguished guests. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome uh, representatives uh, of the uh, International uh, Agency for uh, Atomic uh, Energy. I'm looking at the list of the participants who are attending uh, this uh, event. Uh, I would like to welcome Mr. Jinga Zhang, Zhang uh, from the uh, Department for Technical Cooperation who is uh, managing uh, this program, Mrs. Zhenia Vasilieva, who is a uh, technical coordinator for this project, and Mr. Peter Knoll, who also is, who is responsible for technical issues under this uh, project. Uh, so these were the representatives of the International Atomic Energy Agency. I would also like to welcome uh, Polish project participants, Mr. Andrzej Głowacki, who is uh, the head uh, uh, of the national, Polish National Atomic Energy Agency. It would be great to see uh, the president of this agency. We can hear you, we can hear you very well. Uh, I will uh, give uh, the floor to the president uh, later on, but uh, still I would like to uh, provide you with some information concerning the event. Thank you. I would like to welcome Mrs. Anna Mischak, who is the director of the Department for Public Health and uh, Family uh, at the Ministry of Health. Director Mischak uh, has uh, been in touch with us uh, 
uh, but um, uh, she is no longer with us. Uh, the Ministry of Health is uh, very busy uh, with uh, other issues. I would also like to welcome Mrs. Anna Kamiska, who is the director of the Department for Hygiene and Environment of the Chief Sanitary uh, Inspectorate. Okay, so this has been the first initial introductions. Uh, could we confirm that with the, the connection with Agnieszka Strzemieńska, who is the deputy director uh, of uh, this department uh, at uh, the uh, chief uh, sanitary inspectorate? Okay. We have now connection with uh, the director. I would also like to welcome representatives of uh, 10 uh, centers of nuclear medicine in Poland, uh, which uh, take part in this project. So, uh, nuclear medicine facility in Zgierz, uh, regional uh, specialist hospital in Zgierz, the central clinical uh, hospital of the uh, Medical University in Warsaw, the clinic of uh, oncology, endocrin endocrinology, uh, and the nuclear medicine in Warsaw, the uh, nuclear medicine department from Kielce, the uh, nuclear medicine uh, department of the University Hospital in Krakow, of uh, Center, and, and Center of uh, Oncology in Bydgoszcz, the University Clinical uh, Center in Gdańsk, the Nuclear Medicine uh, Department of the Pomeranian University, Medical University in Szczecin, Medical University uh, in Łódź, uh, the department that deals uh, with the uh, protection, uh, Nuclear Medicine Center, uh, of uh, the hospital in clinic in uh, Wrocław. I would also like to introduce some other person who will be joining us during this, these two days. I would like to uh, introduce uh, people who uh, represent our in institution on uh, implementation of this project and the meeting, uh, the Dorota Wrublewska. Let, let us see, uh, Mrs. Wrublewska. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome everyone who takes part in the project directly, and I would like to welcome the participants of this event who will take part in the discussions using a uh, YouTube channel. Thank you. And uh, I would like uh, you to meet Dr. Piotr Bonkowski, who is uh, responsible responsible for this meeting on behalf of the National Center for Radiation Protection in Healthcare. He helps us, he is the main person responsible uh, for, for helping us to implement the project. Please give me a second, uh, because another technology is uh, indicating that, let's get back to uh, Director Kamińska. Uh, Director Kaminska is not available available right now for obvious reasons. I would also like to welcome everyone who is watching our meeting uh, via YouTube channel. Everything is streamed uh, via internet. Uh, if you are interested uh, in uh, inviting uh, more people to this meeting, to taking part in this meeting, I would like to invite them uh, to visit the website of the National Center for Radiation Protection in Healthcare, where you will find uh, the links to this broadcast. So that's all uh, from me as far as introductions are concerned. Now I would like to give the floor to the President Andrzej Głowacki. Uh, mm, 
to give the introduction to the project. Mr. Bobacki is the head of the National Atomic Energy Agency in Poland. Thank you, Director. strongly support every initiative that enhances the safe use of ionizing radiation. I'm sure that this symposium and the implemented project will contribute to the quality assurance in nuclear medicine and ultimately for safety of patients in our country. Ladies and gentlemen, nuclear medicine is one of the most important branches of ionizing radiation applications. And it's also an area that has a direct impact on people's health because nuclear medicine has revolutionized diagnostic and treatment of many diseases. Yet, as any use of ionizing radiation, it requires undertaking adequate safety measures. We need to be sure that patients and uh, medical personnel are properly protected. We of course, want to help people, not to harm them. This is why safety culture, quality assurance in nuclear medicine department, departments across the country need to be constantly maintained. Also must be improved. Ladies and gentlemen, PEA through technical cooperation with uh, International Atomic Energy Agency actively supports so-called national project. I'm sincerely glad that National Center for Radiation Protection in Healthcare has become another institution that benefits from the IEE support. Let me say that uh, as we had only received draft of the project, uh, that was approximately two years ago, PEA staff and the IEE project officer were absolutely impressed by the presented idea and its scope. Design assumptions provided by the National Center were recognized as innovative and met very positive response. That is why I hope that not only Poland, but also other IEEE member states will benefit from this project and its results. Moreover, I'm glad that the project allows the development of cooperation between Polish national institution research units and laboratories. This fact will significantly contribute to improvement of procedures that influence radiological safety of patients and personnel, which is our goal. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of myself, PA President Dr. Łukasz Menarkiewicz and PA staff, which was involved in this project, I wish you a fruitful and successful meeting. Thank you very much for invitation and for your attention. Dziękuję, dziękuję bardzo za wystąpienie. Speech by Mr. President. Thank you for his warm words concerning the project itself and the cooperation. Uh, international cooperation uh, and uh, cooperation with the National Atomic Energy Agency. So thank you very much, Mr. President, and uh, please stay with us during these two days. If 
Of course, uh, you do not uh, have uh, uh, other uh, duties. Darius, can you hear me? Okay, great. Yes, we hear you. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a privilege to speak to you at this session. Unfortunately, I cannot be with you at the moment due to the current situation. The International Atomic Energy is the world's central intergovernmental forum for scientific and technical cooperation in the nuclear field. It works for the safe, secure, and peaceful uses of nuclear science and technology contributing to international peace and security and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Nuclear medicine, as you all know, is a very interesting field and it helps to improve dramatically the medical diagnosis. It has been shown previously that not only with PET, but also with SPECT, quantitative imaging is possible. Obviously, this does not come for free. Therefore, I'm very happy to work with Darius and Piotr in this project from the agency. Our project involves conducting specialized training for medical physicists in the field of medicine, purchasing additional necessary equipment for QC and creating a secondary standard laboratory equipped with a radionuclide calibrator with a set of calibration sources used for calibration of medical devices. Furthermore, we are also supporting the symposium by sending an international expert. <laughs> Professor Mario Marengo is a medical physicist and expert in radiation protection. He is the former director of medical physics department of the University Hospital of Bologna. After retirement in September 2018, he continues his activity as adjunct professor for the University of Bologna and as a technical expert for the International Atomic Energy Agency. He is the author of more than 90 original publications in peer-reviewed scientific journals and of numerous reports at national and international congresses. So we are very pleased that Professor Mario will give at this symposium two talks. So I hope you, that you will enjoy his talks and, uh, and, and thank you very much. Please enjoy. Bye-bye. Uh, Peter, uh, thank you very much for uh, very kind words. Uh, I hope that you will be uh, partly, at least, uh, participate in this meeting. Uh, and I hope that uh, in the other conditions we will have the chance to meet on the meetings uh, live face to face. Uh, Thank you very much for your words. And we go uh, on with the uh, program. Uh, and the, the, some information for uh, English speaking people. Uh, all presentation during this meeting will be uh, held in Polish or in English, mainly in Polish, but uh, all uh, mm, uh, slides will be uh, delivered in uh, mm, English and uh, you will have the uh, online translation um, into English uh, uh, on the streaming uh, for YouTube. The links are on our web page. So, Please, you, if you will be uh, interested in the words, please use uh, uh, YouTube to uh, hear the translation in, in, uh, in English. 
Uh, okay, so let's start with the uh, first presentation. Uh, I will change to Polish now. Uh, pozwolimy, pozwolę sobie w tej chwili rozpocząć no, sympozjum od pewnego omówienia tego projektu. Mamy w tej chwili, no w zasadzie jesteśmy o czasie, także bardzo proszę o prezentację. Let's see uh, the presentation. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the project uh, started to be developed several years ago. We had completely different situation. Uh, we have been developing the project for six months. Uh, uh, at the end of the last year, uh, the project has been approved by the Agency for Implementation and we thought uh, that everything was going as it should. Uh, we had uh, a timetable, we have agreed everything. Uh, the project is to last two years, uh, between 2020 and 2021. But uh, March uh, complicated uh, our plans, not only our plans, uh, everyone's uh, plans throughout the world were complicated. So, the project title suggests uh, what this project will be about. Secondly, it will be implemented under technical cooperation uh, uh, by the international uh, Atomic Energy Agency. This means that the entire uh, project is focused on technical uh, assistance. It's not a project that is to fund uh, some cost of personnel. So this project uh, should uh, uh, allow people to share experience, to use uh, their experience uh, uh, shared uh, under the auspices of the International Atomic Energy Agency in order to, uh, to, to promote to promote and enhance, train, standardize and improve the accuracy. So all these components uh, uh, compose uh, the uh, control assurance and, uh, uh, sorry, quality assurance and quality control. So as a result, we are focused on the ionizing radiation in medicine. So everywhere else, apart from the medicine, the ionizing uh, radiation is treat it as something that should be limited as much as possible. In medicine, uh, it is also important, but without the radiation, uh, some fields of medicine could not uh, operate. For example, we wouldn't have the nuclear medicine, both in the uh, therapeutic and diagnostic uh, contexts. So if we are talking about intentional exposure uh, of persons to ionizing radiation, we have to have the situation where this exposure is as small as possible, provided that the appropriate diagnostic or therapeutic effects will be um, accomplished. So this promotion, enhancement, uh, training, standardizing and accuracy, uh, these are the elements uh, which make this radiological safety of patients is uh, uh, provided. Objectives. Uh, optimization of medical exposure, of course. So, uh, this is the key term in all uh, fields of medicine, because uh, optimization is uh, quite a general term. We had a lot of uh, legislative experience when we were developing uh, on the Atomic Law uh, Act, uh, 
Uh, we were uh, considering the professional exposure and exposure during uh, other non-medical causes. So it's relatively simple to uh, describe it in terms of numbers, but in case of medicine, it's often based on good practice. The good practice is, again, a quite a general word, and part of the uh, good practice is optimization, without the optimization of the exposure, to make sure that it's as low as possible However, uh, the diagnostic uh, target must be accomplished. In nuclear medicine, quite often, it's quite a big challenge. It's a completely different field uh, of medicine where X-ray radiation, for instance, is used. Uh, another objective is uh, to enhance capabilities of nuclear medicine departments in the field of ensuring uh, quality assurance and quality control. It is related to training uh, of medical physicists in terms of uh, quality assurance and control. It also depends on equipment used uh, for these purposes. So this project addresses and supports these themes, these objectives. So what are we going to offer under this project? First of all, some training opportunities. On the one hand, uh, these are the expert missions, uh, um, experts uh, of the International Atomic Energy Agency. So I'm telling you about the plans we have made. Uh, later on, I will show you the present context. So these are the workshops on quality control in selected uh, project participants, nuclear medicine departments. Uh, these opportunities also include visits at the leading facility f facilities of nuclear medicine, medicine. These are the facilities that have been selected by the project participants. And uh, funding, project uh, funding to finance uh, participation of uh, some project participants to take part in uh, conferences or meetings uh, delivered and organized uh, by the International Atomic Energy Agency together with the National Atomic Energy Agency. As you know, sometimes uh, this cost is rather high. What else? We have also planned some activities uh, that will be focused on establishing two reference centers uh, dealing with the uh, quality control and quality assurance in nuclear medicine. These centers are established in uh, Bydgoszcz uh, and uh, Warsaw. This also relates uh, to conducting some, some tests to, uh, to, to, to measure activity in the nuclear medicine departments. And procurement. Uh, the, some, some quality control equipment will be purchased. So we will be uh, buying Yaschak phantoms, uh, NEMA body phantoms, the four quadrant bar phantoms and flat sources with cobalt 57. We will also purchase uh, a calibration equipment, calibrator, together with uh, reference sources to calibrate uh, the um, activity uh, uh, measuring devices. So now I will tell you who the project uh, parties are. So there will be 10 nuclear medicine departments uh, that have been selected uh, together with the Polish Society of Nuclear Medicine, the national consultant in nuclear medicine. Uh, 
Apart from this, uh, we will be uh, cooperating with uh, different institutions involved with the projects of the International Atomic Energy Agency. It's the Polish Atomic Energy Agency. Minister of Health, who is responsible for uh, the binding regulation, uh, regulations concerning medical exposure in different aspects. Um, uh, also, Polish Society of Nuclear Medicine will be involved, uh, the national consultant in nuclear medicine. The chief uh, sanitary inspectorate that also has uh, a part uh, to play in terms of assessment of uh, performance of safe uh, exposure to patients under medical exposure, and the National Center for Radiation Protection in Healthcare. So, uh, it sounds like this is the project, but everything has changed in March. One more thing I would like to add. Uh, this project, as you have seen, is participated by these 10 nuclear medicine departments and the National Center. But also, it is uh, the project, uh, and the, the project, this project's value is almost uh, 300,000 euro. So this is quite a significant amount. This is a project that is to last for two years, but under this project, we will be buying a lot of things. We will be uh, organizing meetings, conferences, quite a lot of them. I would like to say that as far as this year is concerned, we had rather broad uh, plans in the uh, fourth quarter of this year. I would like to remind you that uh, the fourth quarter has already started and we are just having a kick off meeting of this project. We were planning uh, this uh, meeting to take part in the first quarter. So if you remember, we were to meet in March uh, 2020. But um, uh, Due to the COVID situation, pandemic, uh, we had to change the plans. And um, we also were to hold a congress of the Polish Society of uh, Atomic uh, uh, Energy. It has to be hold, held. Uh, uh, we were also going to organize workshops on uh, quality control and co quality assurance. We were planning. I'm looking at the slides. We were planning to, to, to buy some uh, uh, items. And actually, these purchases uh, are, are made, so this is, um, this is on time. We were also planning some visits to, to uh, standard, standard labs. Uh, four people were to take part in the standard uh, labs. So uh, these meetings, these conferences, the, three, the trips uh, didn't take part uh, this year. Uh, they have not taken, they have not been organized and they will not be organized uh, this year. Under this meeting, I would like to ask all the project participants, everyone who has logged on, on the project platform, I would like you to consider how uh, the objectives of the project should be achieved in this situation, in these circumstances. Now it is hard to plan uh, trips, visits to nuclear medicine departments, we were, oh, it would be difficult to take part in uh, conferences unless they are organized under online uh, formula. So it's hard to plan anything in the current circumstances. So during these two days, we have to invent a method how to implement this project to make sure that it, it really is delivered. And on the other hand, we have to make sure that the beneficiaries uh, have to achieve their objectives. They 
uh, to strengthen, improve, train in the field of quality assurance and quality control. Uh, so um, we have a, a major problem with implementation of the project, although initially, initially we thought that the things we were planning uh, to organize uh, were not going to be so complicated. What else are we planning to do under this project? First of all, uh, the opening meeting, the symposium, is taking part right now. We originally we were planning to have it during the first quarter of 2020. Uh, we also face a problem concerning workshops on quality control. The workshops uh, were treating as a satellite. A symposium uh, during the Congress uh, of the Polish Society of Nuclear Medicine. So we have no idea right now how to deliver these objectives. Uh, the online uh, form is always possible, but sometimes uh, we need something uh, more than just online. Um, streamline. Uh, sometimes we need some uh, physical meetings to see physical equipment. We need to operate in the real place, real time. Purchases, procurement. Well, as far as procurement is concerned, uh, everything seems to be according to the project uh, timetable. We are, go we are planning to complete the, the procurement uh, this year, by the end of this year. But due to the current situation, uh, we wanted to uh, complete uh, all the purchases in 2020, uh, both the ones planned for this year and the ones planned for 2021. In 2020, probably we will not be able to achieve uh, any more in terms of implementation of this project, unless something changes, but I'm rather doubtful. It means that in next year uh, we will have, we will be quite busy uh, with the tasks uh, that will have to be delivered simultaneously. These tasks uh, will be implemented according to the project uh, assumptions not necessarily according to the timetable we had originally planned. We will be also changing some formula, but uh, we will do our best to follow uh, the method planned under the project. Uh, and of course, we will be agreeing this uh, with the International Atomic Energy Agency. I would like to thank the agency for being understanding. So far, the project cooperation has uh, been uh, great. I am very happy that the team uh, of the agency is cooperating with us uh, very well. The team is very open, is very helpful to make sure that this project is delivered uh, according to the plans. I think that's uh, the end uh, of my presentation. Uh, this is all I wanted to share with you. I would like to uh, wish you during these two days, and also I would like to wish you for the future, I, I hope to health, I would like to wish you health. Uh, health is the key value nowadays. But of course, uh, we need to do our things. Uh, we cannot uh, um, lock uh, ourselves completely. Uh, we cannot just wait for the uh, events happening. So let's uh, try to create the future. Also under the project uh, we are opening today. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us. Uh, thank you uh, for... Um, communicating with us uh, under this platform. The 
platform of project users. I would also like to thank all the persons uh, who have uh, contacted uh, us uh, via YouTube. I hope that we have some YouTube participants. Uh, I think that uh, now it's time to commence the next speech. Piotr, I would like to ask you uh, to cancel my presentation, to hide my presentation. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is very distinguished, as you know, guest from agency, expert of uh, IEA, uh, Dr. Mario Arengo. He will talk us on the red thread that connects quality calibration and diagnostic reference levels. Uh, Mario, uh, the floor uh, is your. Okay, and um, thank you very much. I hope that you can hear me. Uh, if you can confirm in any way, it will be uh, better for me just because in this situation one not knows if everything is working properly. Yes, I see you oh. and I hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, let me first of all thank you for the kind invitation. Uh, let me compliment, compliment uh, Professor Kruzinski uh, uh, and all your community for having the capacity of developing such very nice national project and also I would say such, such timely this is the correct time to have projects like the one that you have developed. So my compliments, but let uh, now start with the real stuff, with the real presentation. In today's presentation, I would like to uh, speak with you to discuss uh, some aspects related to the quality and, and the management of quality in nuclear medicine, and also give you a perspective on uh, the quantum audits that probably you already know, but I will spend a few words about this. Uh, uh, discuss the approach to QAQC of the nuclear medicine equipment and in particular to the aspect of calibration and I will speak uh, with some detail about the calibration of activity meters and the cross calibration with the PET CT scanners. Clearly all of these activities require documents, formalized standard operating procedures and finally I will touch the uh, very relevant theme of the diagnostic reverence level in nuclear medicine. And I hope that by the end of my presentation, I showed you that there is a red thread, a connection between all of these aspects. Clearly, uh, in living in uh, nuclear medicine, uh, operating in a department that works with ionizing radiation, we are used to be inspected, to be checked, to have to report. And we are so used also to be audited. Actually, our life in a department is a series of steps in which we uh, are under examination at several levels and to different ends of end goals. Uh, so clinical audits are not really something new. We have all the capacity to face them, but these are a very um, relevant uh, tool in our hands in order to improve uh, the quality of the service that we um, provide day by day to our patients. And this, it is not a case that the European BSS, already in the previous version of 2013, introduced the concept of clinical audits. Well, uh, as you know, the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency has uh, uh, three uh, um, programs of auditing for the three main specialties. We have the quattro in radiotherapy, we have the quadrille for diagnostic imaging, and we have the quantum as a specific tool for auditing in nuclear medicine. And these are uh, tools for peer review, so not for an inspective control, but uh, by a visit uh, made by peers with a full knowledge in the field that can help to apply uh, quality improvement in a specific department. And Quantum has already an history. Uh, it has been initially designed in 2006 applied uh, in 2008, and following the principle of continuous improvement, 
uh, it has been updated already two times. Nowadays we have online the draft of the version number three that is available. The real publication will take some time to be printed and distributed, but there is already the text uh, downloadable in the uh, Human Health webcam campus of the agency. And nowadays we are finishing exactly in these weeks uh, where we are uh, finishing a new uh, companion document of the plan that is a document on management of quality system in nuclear medicine that will help in developing a quality system and the tools of a quality system, for example, a quality manual and the most important procedures that should be in place to have a vital quality system in operation. Uh, this team of peers that uh, uh, is uh, uh, performing the external audits under the umbrella of the agency is a multidisciplinary team and this is a very important aspect because once again we are speaking about a comprehensive program of audit in which not only the uh, quality of the uh, let's say QC or, of a specific type of equipment is taken in, into consideration but all the aspects that uh, are involved in performing the uh, the practices in nuclear medicine are considered, uh, starting from the review of the procedures, uh, observation on the practical implementation of the activities, interviews with the staff, uh, review of, of the previous audit, check also of the reports, of the clinical reports of the examination. And this is made uh, using a pre-formatted uh, checklist that is a tool also in uh, the um, practical application of internal audits. Clearly, in order to make the uh, comparison between the observation and the expected standard, we have to define the standard. And in most part of the cases, these are actually coming from uh, the uh, same IAEA documents. There is a variety of very useful, very relevant documents on all the aspects of uh, quality assurance of equipment, uh, radiation measurement, etc., and in some cases also national or international guidelines like the one given uh, by the ENM or by the uh, American SNM Society of Nuclear Medicine. And uh, the results of the audit are expressed on a semi quantitative scale of levels of conformance so that it's, it, it is possible. Uh, that are defined in this table, but I'm not uh, delaying it here. Uh, this uh, uh, semi-quantitative uh, uh, analysis allows us to show the result in, in such a type of polar graphs. In example, this is a, a, a pre-audit, an internal audit made by the staff before a confirmation audit by the, made by the external team of the agency. And you see that we have the comprehens comprehensive score in all the sectors, starting from the definition of strategy, the administration of the department, the management of human resources within the department, going to the management of the quality system, QAQC of the equipment, IT, radio pharmacy in its different level. So this is a sort of, I, I like to think of this like a compass, or if you prefer, like a bullseye analysis of the quality system in your nuclear medicine department. And the comparison of the result of the internal audit with the uh, external audit can show you uh, the uh, sectors in which you are really strong and the sector in which there is the need of spend more energy in order to consolidate or, or improve. But uh, let's now uh, go to the aspect of quality assurance and calibration in general. Uh, so uh, uh, I don't like when we consider the necessity of uh, quality assurance and uh, calibration of the equipment only because they are recommended in some type of uh, regulatory reference, because they are in our national radiation protection law or because they are included in the European BSS. It is important for us to understand that quality assurance is the basis for quantitative procedures in nuclear medicine, is the, base, the basic pillar in which the performance of nuclear medicine practices relies. But uh, uh, to do proper quality assurance, we have not to operate only within the box that you see here in the right part of the, of the slide, that is the typical uh, activity in nuclear medicine. We are using the camera, 
with the uh, we do a constancy test and we compare with the standard if everything is okay we continue to use the camera if something is not not okay we activate a corrective action that can be try to do a small calibration call the service etc but the according to the international electrotechnical commission the life cycle of an equipment is not limited to its content, uh, continuous use but the real application of quality assurance starts from the very beginning of the life of an equipment at the time in which it is conceived, is purchased, and the specifications are written. On the basis of this specification, we can perform acceptance tests. And on the basis of the result of the acceptance and performance test that we do uh, when the equipment is brand new and perfectly calibrated by the company, we can obtain the reference values that will be used as the real good standards in the life of the people. So there is much more than uh, the routine use, also the design of the purchase of an equipment and the specification are a uh, key component in the quality assurance cycle. And these acceptance tests are extremely important because this is the phase in which we can really uh, establish a reference value when uh, the uh, equipment is in its perfect condition, but we have also to remember as employees of, and personally I've been working for a public hospital spending public money, but also in a private uh, health institution, money is important, it is extremely important that we verify that the current money regularly valid with which we pay the equipment as, as a counterpart and equipment that is perfectly working. So this is important not only for uh, the administration, but also to establish uh, the safety and quality of the uh, practices that we perform on our patients. Uh, in order to describe all the procedures we that we are performing, for example, in the term in terms of the AQC of equipment, it is extremely useful to have written standard operating procedure. This is an example, uh, the text is actually in Italian, is a copy of a partial of the uh, flowchart of QAQC of, of equipment that is actually four pages uh, that I wrote uh, several years ago for our department. This helps you in concatenating the sequences of operation, input the checkpoints in order to verify that everything is performed regularly and as expected. So uh, having the capacity of doing the test is an aspect regularly performing the management of the tests and properly managing uh, the results is another aspect. And all of this requires uh, uh, proper organization. And for this, we speak about uh, quality management because an essential part of the quality management system is an example to define the corrective action once we uh, find a result that is not conforming to what expect. So in this case, we should not be simply thinking in this precise moment what I have to do now that the result is not okay, but we should have a, an analysis pre uh, uh, performed that help us and guide us in all the steps that are necessary to correct and remove uh, the deviation. In example, uh, once again, this test, uh, I'm sorry, it is in Italian, I don't forgot uh, to translate it. But I imagine that you can understand the sense after my description. So uh, a useful type of document is in tabular form. And we have a column in which there is a code for the type of deviation that we have observed, uh, a name, and a short description. In example, this is a table for managing deviation in uh, spec gamma cameras. And the first column type, the first voice is the system is not acquiring. And there is a short description that guides the technologists or the physicists that are in facing the problem uh, on the first step to do to perform. For example, check if the system is uh, properly powered, uh, check all the parameters, try to restart the system. Very basic guide, but is helpful in order to avoid to rediscover hot water at each time that we have uh, a real deviation. And the uh, last three columns are defining the responsibility of who is uh, detecting the issue, who is managing the issue, who is reporting the issue. So this type of formatting helps us to be reproducible and to be 
not so much operator dependent in our uh, practice. And we have to remember that the equipment that we use are not only sophisticated uh, nuclear uh, radiation detectors, but they are also medical devices. So a medical device required to be checked and maintained uh, according to the instruction uh, given by the manufacturer, because if this is not uh, the case, the real certification of the equipment is void. Uh, so it is extremely important that we uh, consider also these medical legal aspects uh, in the life of an equipment. But let me now enter in specific in the aspect of calibration and with particular reference to the uh, activity meters, the so-called dose calibrators. Uh, and it is important when we uh, face a new aspect or we are going to revise our practice to ask ourselves, what do the basic safety standards say? Let me take a minute before writing the new standard operating procedure or before uh, changing something in our practice let me check what the DSS say. And the DSAs of the IAEA are extremely important. The last version had some very relevant concepts that were absent, unfortunately, in previous versions, but now they are in place. And in particular, the DSS say in this version that optimization should be applied not on an average level, but for each medical exposure. So we should have a good point of optimization for each patient. We should be sure that every single acquisition has reached this point of, of optimization. And this is possible only if we have uh, a sound standard operating procedure. And also the DSS emphasize the uh, role uh, that we have as medical physicists in this con context and help us to show uh, which is the uh, relevance of uh, uh, our professional figure uh, in, a, in a modern hospital setting. And uh, a voice that was not present in the previous version of the BSS and now is in, is about the role of calibration. Of so now is a more precise approach that clarifies the difference between calibration and the other components of the, the quality assurance. All the sources should be calibrated and all the dosimeters and the equipment should be probably calibrated according to sources or method traceable to standards. So this is extremely important that calibration is something that should be traceable to the international standard. And about the activity meters, we have to say that there is plenty of publication, international standard describing uh, how this equipment should be calibrated and uh, placed under control. And there is also a relevant document of the IAEA. If you don't have all the others, uh, well, this is uh, as all the document of the IAEA freely downloadable from the website. But unfortunately, uh, despite uh, the uh, stress that the IAEA documents put on the calibration also of the activity meters, in practice, all these standards are not routinely applied, uh, nor by the vendors, nor by the users, uh, for uh, activity meters in real practice. But why the calibration of a relatively small, inexpensive equipment like an activity meter is so important? You can ask Mario why you are spending so much more about activity meters. The important stuff is the PET CT scanner. For example, a PET CT scanner may cost. 1 million euros and more, an activity meter may cost 10,000 euros, so the important equipment is really the PET-CT. But the exposure of the patient in nuclear medicine is determined by the, working, uh, the, the proper work of the activity meter. This is the uh, equipment that is measuring the quantity that is connected with the patient exposure, that is connected with the patient dose is measuring the amount of activity in the radiopharmaceutical preparation. And this may happen even hours before that the patient see the, the scanner. So it is extremely important that this equipment determining the exposure of the patient, determining the dose, is uh, uh, in its optimal modality of operation. And how should be uh, a activity meter be calibrated? Well, the two sentences in bold 
describe uh, what is the situation. Uh, there are no alternatives. Uh, an activity meter should be calibrated using a certified source of the same radio client, traceable to international standard, or could be calibrated by in an intercomparison with another calibrated instrument that has been calibrated using this type of sources. You may think that this is a problem for many radio clients to apply this. Well, it is not always the case. Uh, we have uh, uh, available on the market reference source, standardized source for a variety of radionuclide like uh, iodine, yttrium 90, lutetium 177. And look, also as regards fluor 18 and gallium 68, we have traceable sources available on the market. I will show you in a next slide based on uh, technology developed in the United States uh, on uh, germanium 68. Uh, for some other radionuclide short-lived, it is a problem to have sources or to have assimilated certified sources. And so the approach B is the most following. And this is the typical uh, solution in the case of technician 99M. Uh, calibration factors supplied by the manufacturer are not a real calibration, are not traceable to international standard. Typically, the laboratory of the manufacturer of the activity meters are not secondary standard nor tertiary uh, standard labs. They, in many cases, in most cases, they don't have any of these calibrated sources of the specific clinically used regular client. Uh, these uh, uh, calibration, in general, are not traceable to the international standard. So the becquerel provided by the certain activity meters based on the uh, calibration of the manufacturer are nominal becquerel. Are the becquerel of Capintech or are the becquerel of Atom Lab are not the becquerel of the international standard uh, system of unit measurement. And let me clarify with you what is not a calibration. Well, one of the most important manufacturers calibrates his uh, uh, activity meter using an energy uh, calibration curve that is essentially based on two sources of cobalt 60 and cobalt 57 and on a linear interpolation uh, between uh, the, uh, these extremes. This is not a traceable procedure. This is uh, uh, producing for uh, monoenergetic nuclide some acceptable result, several percent, uh, with an approximation of several percent respect to true result, but they are not in any case traceable to international standards. And this is a, a label that I, uh, I take a, a picture during a quantum audit. Uh, the operator, the user, was sure that has a, a calibrated activity meter because it was calibrated using a traceable season 137 source. Well, this is not a traceable calibration, or at least, least this is traceable only for season 137. But the fact that an activity meter is properly calibrated for this long-lived radium client has not any signification on the correctness of the calibration for technician 99M, for fluor 18, for iodine 131. This is, uh, there is a complete independence between the calibration factor of each radium client. So this is simply a test of the correct functioning of the equipment for this specific radium client but we cannot infer that it's working properly also for the clinical used radionuclides. So there are not alternative respect to what we have seen before. And it, it is a pity for me to notice that in many countries there are still national laboratories that uh, for a cost uh, perform periodical calibration of activity meters and what they do actually is testing with the same sources that you may have at the hospital a source uh, long-lived of cesium, cobalt-57, barium, and cobalt-60. This is a good testing of the status of the equipment, but it's a testing of the status. is not proving that the equipment is properly calibrated for the clinically used radionuclides. Even if the energy are closed, this is not a phenomenon that is based on uh, windows uh, like in the gamma camera, no, a photo peak uh, surrounded by a window. There are no windows in the activity meters. It's an integral detector, and is the uh, mm, decay scheme of each individual radionuclide that determines the response 
in the, in the detector. So that it is necessary to, uh, if we want uh, really to do this optimization for each patient, as requested by the DSS, to have a proper calibration for our scans. So it is necessary to do an effort in order to improve the calibration, and I'm particularly happy to see that between the goals of your national project, this has been centered as one of the expected uh, goals to be uh, reached. And it is important to cross-calibrate the activity meters and the PET-CT scanner in particular. For PET-CT, it is true also for SPEC, but let me spend a uh, few words uh, as regards PET-CT uh, in a, a nice uh, guideline and review uh, several years ago, it was graduated that they assess to the, the, the level of assessment of the imaging obtained by a study going from the very basic, simply visual, completely qualitative analysis of the images. On the other extreme of the scale, we have the full kinetic, kinetic analysis of the data that is powerful but is difficult to apply in routine in a clinical context, and in between we have the semi-quantitative analysis, analysis based on the standardized uptake value. And this is actually what is performed in the vast majority of the clinical center. And this is also the approach that is recommended by big international societies of nuclear medicine like the ENM that uh, uh, clearly indicates like the analysis with the SOV is the basic for quantitative approach in uh, nuclear medicine routine studies. But clearly, this is uh, not simply the production of a value, a numeric value, because we are physicists, we like to be quantitative. It is not a fancy uh, number to be added to the result of the scan, but is really based on uh, physiology, is based on the Sokolov model of the uh, uh, metabolism of FDG described in this figure. We know that at the equilibrium we have four contents described the kinetic model of this equilibrium, and these constants are in turn uh, related each other through uh, this equation to what is called the influx constant. Well, SUV is proportional to this influx constant, and this is simply to conclude it was not an attempt to make a review of the uh, metabolism of FDG and the rational use of FDG uh, in clinical practice, but this was to remember that the SUV is not simply an indicator that came from the images, but it is something that is based on the physiology to all of these analysis. And frequently this has been forgotten because uh, the SUV at the end is not so easy is not a straightforward measurement, so that even if the equation is relatively simple, a lot of uh, uh, parameters can influence uh, this measurement, so that the measure of SUV may be affected by big uncertainties. And this has led someone, some criticism, to say that the real acronym is silly, useless value. This is not the case. This is a negative approach that do not uh, collect the real message that is based on the physiological models that are behind this one. But in any case, measure reliably the SUV is not easy because a lot of factors uh, uh, described in this slide, for which I would like to thank my friend Teresa Sera, uh, all these factors may influence the quality of the result. And the most important, the first, is the calibration between the PET scanner and the activity meter. So the first point in which we have control of exposure of the patient and of the quantitative quality of the result is the calibration of the activity meter and how this is transported on the PET CT scanner. So this is the reason for me to uh, insist on activity meters. And as I told you, uh, there is actually nowadays commercially available, a simulated source calibrated, uh, traceable to the National Institute of Standard and Technology of the USA, based on the equilibrium between germanium and gallium 68, that is calibrated also as equivalent to RAT. 
So this make, makes possible for each pet laboratory by acquiring a commercially available source to calibrate accurately traceable to the NIST uh, their activity meter. And this is a technology that the NIST developed. You can see here the work of Dimmerman and colleagues. And then the technology has been sold to a commercial producer so that this source is readily available on the market. And you know that this calibration of the CT scanner is made, uh, this cross calibration is made through the classical calibration with a cylindrical phantom, so called the um, well counter or calibration factor calibration that has to be performed periodically. And I would like to remember that the full procedure for doing this calibration accurately is described in this still very important uh, IEA document. And uh, the year accreditation program, in example, uh, here you know is uh, an initiative of the ENM, has shown like uh, as standardizing all the conditions, taking into account all the aspects that we see before, it is possible to obtain actually uh, reliable results, uh, comparable results within center and center and within the same center, comparable results when the patient comes uh, uh, for a repetition of a test or is uh, uh, imagined in another scanner, so that uh, after applying uh, the, the uh, correct uh, procedure of taking into account all the parameters, the deviation between point and point in the recovery curve is within the uh, normal uncertainties and in a very acceptable rate. So that it is our work to do this. It is something that is feasible. It is not easy, but we, the medical physicists, are there exactly for this reason. If we're uh, so easy, they will not need us. We are there just to take in account the complex situation and management of this sophisticated equipment. And as regards uh, the diagnostic reference level, as you know, these are extremely important in order to uh, evaluate if we are really in a good point respect to uh, optimization for each patient. And the EIA, uh, IAEA document says clearly that for each kind of studies, there should be a written protocol. For each diagnostic procedure, a written protocol giving the detail of all the uh, procedure to be performed step by step uh, for acquiring a study. And this SOP should be taken in account also the appropriate DRL for the procedure. As you know, there are cases in which we have to deviate in clinical practice from re the reality, from the, the what is has been expected or planned in the in the SOPs, in the standard operating procedure. When we receive a patient that is 140 kilos, clearly we have probably to do some adjustment to our procedure and maybe uh, we will not administer exactly the same activity that is expected for a, uh, let's say, um, patient with a more uh, regular uh, body size. Um, the uh, ENM has published for many years a prototype of the quality system, including models for the, from, for the SOPs and for the main procedures. Uh, this has been downloadable for many years. In this time, it is probably under review. It has been suspended, the download. But in any case, as I told you, the new model, the new document that will be soon published by the IEA on management of quality system in nuclear medicine will give a suggestion also for a straightforward formulation of the clinical SOPs in order to give to our doctors a formatted uh, approach that can be applied uh, very well in all the different situations. So this will be public soon. And uh, as we know, the BSS are not a limit. They are a tool for optimization. There can be deviation, I, as I just commented, but uh, the DRL should be present and they should be re-evaluated periodically and kept under control. So the first step in optimization is to have an appropriate DRL taking in account the population of patients and taking in, into account uh, also the type of equipment that we have. 
But also we have the second point is to periodically review the DRL because the uh, situation evolves. The modality of using the studies evolves, the quality of the radiopharmaceutical, the type of the radiopharmaceutical evolves, uh, the reconstruction software changes so that makes possible, in example, to use less activity so that uh, it is uh, possible, it is necessary to periodically review this uh, diagnostic reference level in our current practice. And uh, uh, in the case of nuclear medicine, as you know, uh, the uh, DRL are expressed in the terms of the activity of the radiopharmaceutical. So once again, the activity meter and their properly calibration is extremely important in order to be also compliant to disaster. And uh, to establish the DRLs, if we do not have punctual national indication, we can uh, look at the uh, guidelines of the major associations, in example for bone scintigraphy, in example for PET-CT, they give indication clearly taking into account, in this case there is a wide range because taking uh, takes into account a different generation of scanners that are still in operation. And also uh, the standard of the product characteristic of the radiopharmaceutical give us an indication of the activity that should not be overcome for each patient. Clearly these are then to be further optimized because these are very wide limits, but are the first point in approach definition of the DRS. And clearly we have full of documentation in Europe uh, there is a, do a document in the radiation protection series. Once again, this is freely downloadable in the website of the European Union that uh, suggests us how to correctly establish the DRL in our facility and give us also a review of what are the DRLs uh, defined for the most uh, important examination in a variety of countries. And clearly there is a spectra of values, there is a scatter because not always the situation is the same uh, in each country, not always the incidence of a pathology is the same, and so also the relative importance of the optimization may uh, have different application in different countries. Uh, clearly, in the case of multimodal examination, uh, we have to uh, define DRLs both for the emissive component based on the activity of the radiopharmaceutical as well as for the CT component. Independently, it is a diagnostic or a non-diagnostic DRL for each of these cases should be present. And this, just to finish, is an example of the uh, last, uh, one of the last revisions of the um, DRLs that we made for an examination for which in Italy there was not in this time a DRL nationally defined, that is gallium 68 DOTA studies, and so we, uh, in an initial group of patients within the research protocol for the initial application of this type of examination, we do all the statistic analysis according to the EU report mentioned in advance in order to establish uh, the uh, 75 percentile of the CTDI and of the DLP for the uh, CT uh, studies applied in those years. And also here there is the statistic of the level of activity administered to patient uh, in absolute terms and normalized by the weight of the patient. So that this is another example of the type of activity that we have to do uh, routinely in order to maintain the proper optimization of the scans uh, for patient. And so, uh, with this, I'm going to uh, conclude my presentation. Uh, I, I would like to recap the most important aspect over which I try to insist. So uh, the BSS of the IEAA uh, stressed the uh, relevance of QA, QC and calibration for all the equipment that we use. This was not so clearly stated in previous version, and so this is a very important progress uh, in, the, in the formulation of the basic safety standard. And we have seen like activity meters 
are a fundamental equipment, uh, not only to measure activity, but also to grant quality of the studies, safety of the studies for patients, in order to uh, assess their dose. The activity should be uh, measured uh, in a way that is traceable to the international standard uh, international system of measurement, so the Becquerel in my hospital should be equal to the Becquerel of the international standard, not to the Becquerel of a specific company, should be really the standard uh, unit. And uh, this is the only way in order to accurately establish the dose to patient. The diagnostic reference level, as we have just seen, are based on the activity values, so rely on what is measured by the activity meters and all the quantitative measurements that we perform are based on the accurate calibration and cross calibration of all our equipment. So in conclusion, uh, I try to show you that uh, quality is not a simple, maintaining top quality, producing quality in, not, in our department is not a simple task. Uh, in general, quality is a multi-parametric aspect of all our activity is a very complex aspect, and this is particularly true in a complex discipline like this nuclear medicine, in which not only uh, the study and the quality of the study is determined by the exposure to the patient to an equipment, no? but it is the whole process, including the patient preparation, the diet that we administer to the patient before the study, uh, the pre-testing of the patient, the pre-medication, the administration of the real radiopharmaceutical, all these aspects are extremely important in order to establish the quality of the result. And this is uh, the reason for me to conclude that only a comprehensive approach that take in account all the components can allow to maintain appropriate standard of performance and allows us to uh, treat our patient in a safe, reliably and quality way. And this is all for me today. I thank you very much again and uh, for the invitation and for your kind of attention. Um, Mario, uh, thank you very much for your very complete presentation on the uh, quality control. Red threads, that's that's key point, for, uh, I think. Uh, but this is key point for quality control, quality assurance. We are open for discussion now. We have uh, 10 minutes now ahead to uh, discuss or to uh, give the question for the for our presenter, for our guest. Uh, we are waiting uh, on the chat. And uh, if, uh, just a moment. This is one of the questions. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, this depends on the modality in which the uh, regulation are made in the countries. Uh, in some countries, uh, in a limited number of countries, I would like to say, there are specific indications in the uh, national regulation on the modality of testing, which type of testing should be performed. Uh, I, I will say that in my perception, this is the case in several countries of Eastern Europe. Uh, in Western Europe, uh, instead, uh, the uh, reference is mostly made to technical documents. In example, if uh, exists international standard like the EEC, IEC recommendation, and also the radiation protection documentation, national regulation refer uh, the uh, reader to this type of documents. So you can find documents describing the necessary acceptance test and their schedule uh, in IEC publication, IAEA publication, um, in the uh, radiation protection uh, series, and so that, in example, in Italy there is not a specific indication uh, for doing the acceptance test of the PET CT, uh, you should do uh, resolution, image quality, uh, NEC, etc., etc. No, the, the reference for us in Italy and in many countries of Western Europe is there should be a qualified professional to overview this test, and this is a medical physicist, and he should use uh, 
technical standard internationally recognized. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, if the other questions are available, please let us know. Uh, but if someone would like to ask uh, head to head, let's say, uh, please hand your uh, up your hand. It means the hand is available on the bottom right corner. Uh, press the hand, and we will see if someone will uh, have uh, ask Mario. There's and only yep. In some cases, uh, uh, the, the the listeners should reflect a little bit, re re read the slides. So uh, uh, in the slides, you have also my email address. So in the case that you don't feel confident to make a question now and won't think your question very well, please feel free of writing at any time. I will reply. Yep. You hear, all of you hear about that. So uh, yes, thank you very much. But um, well, I have uh, uh, a comment for, for your presentation. It means uh, on uh, activity meters and the calibration of activity meters. That really, that's a problem because uh, the variation of and the number of um, uh, isotopes used in nuclear medicine uh, is completely different than the other situation. Uh, let's say uh, I compare it, yeah, I compare it uh, to uh, X-ray. So X-ray is uh, very simple uh, to make some um, some calibration of the devices, of uh, meters. In nuclear medicine, we have really a lot of different energies, uh, different um, uh, different radiopharmaceuticals. It means we have a problem with the transmission in the body. That's the, the, the problem uh, in nuclear medicine. And by the, uh, um, uh, at the beginning, we have the uh, calculation or measurement of uh, the activity and that's the problem and uh, you said that in the presentation that it uh, uh, would happen hours before so we have the problem uh, arising hours before the administration and next uh, the, uh, the the uh, imaging so that's that's really that's the problem Arius, can i can i comment so it is really a problem uh, and it is a problem that needs management but we are here for this uh, in this position there are medical physicists that have a very high qualification exactly because this is not an easy task and requires the perspective view that we physicists are used to have are trained to have so uh, uh, it is really an issue to have standards for such a variety of regular flights. But it is something that we should think with planning mentality. In example, you know, we spend thousands and thousands of euros buying radio pharmaceuticals. We have contracts that are multimillionary with companies. And we do not ask them to supply inside the scope of the contract also the standard. With capsule of ID-131 for hundred and hundred uh, thousand do dollars or euros, and we do not ask that they send in the very beginning one standardized dose certified once, so that we can. In, uh, what we do typically in, in our area uh, around to Bologna is that we buy a standard every three years, and then we rotate among all the hospitals in there. So this makes also some economy, some synergy between institutions and help us also to cross-check our activity meters. So it is something in which our medical physicists should, should think perspectively, not think after. Oh, they ask, they sign a contract for radium, but we don't have the standard. Now, this should be before, like when we write the specification of the treatment. We won't like to go to use radium to treat or uh, another uh, innovative radium applied. Okay, the first item is to have the standard to have the contamination meters, to have the equipment necessary for this. And this should be the center of what is called the perspective risk or prospective risk analysis. 
That's right. Thank you very much. And uh, well, uh, the next comment is the statistics, and that's it's very typical in the uh, implementation of ionizing radiation. But still, the the problem in nuclear medicine is much higher than in other fields because uh, the propagation of the uh, radiopharmaceuticals in the body depends on the on the body on the on the it's uh, typical for a person so this is uh, so when we are thinking on uh, statistics on the DRL for example DRL so we have uh, a lot of different problems in nuclear medicine than the in the other uh, diagnostics uh, imaging so that's really that's that's the problem yep. Yes, but uh, uh, the most important aspect is to have the DRL properly and accurately defined for the most used, the most important type of examination. Like, in example, FDG, PET-CT, myocardial uh, spect, bone scintigraphy. The most frequent examination should have a very accurate uh, DRL, and this can be, in practice, established very well. For the other, in any case, the, DR, the activity of measuring and checking the DRL is a work that never finishes. So we start with a sample of patient and we can review after acquiring a uh, bigger statistic of patient after one year. But we have to start with an idea. It is not acceptable for me first to start to do the examination and after one year to do the DRL. No, I will use a DRL a very basic DRL, in example, taken by the SPC of the radio pharmaceutical, by the, the, the instruction given by the manufacturer of the radio pharmaceutical, as the very first step, and then try to do after days a first version of the DRL, then review after one month, re then review after one year, so that you are iteratively reviewing and try to convert to an optimized result. Yep, yep, that's, that's the key point, yep. Well, uh, uh okay so uh uh are any question from the platform uh any hands any chat pub probably uh, uh chat uh, questions or comments if not uh, uh, Mario thank you very much thank you to you Oh, very brilliant, uh, uh, very brilliant uh, presentation, which uh, touched everything. It means uh, everything in the chain of the quality assurance, quality control, nuclear medicine, touching everything. I I think, and uh, facing a lot of problems, and uh, well, we have to look for uh, for the future to try to implement any of the uh, good ideas delivered by agency, by you, by your experience. And once again, thank you very much uh, to, um, to present us a very, very uh, full, fruitful thank you. information. Uh, on thank the, you very much again. Thank you. Bye. Uh, Wracając well, so do programu, proszę Państwa, mamy w tej chwili 15 minut przerwy technicznej. Uh, at your respective places. We'll meet back at noon, but before we uh, start the afternoon session, I'd like to introduce the speakers who will be having their presentations after the break. I would also like to apologize to Professors Krulicki and Małkowski that I haven't introduced them at the very beginning. So I, I'm really very sorry, and I'd like to welcome Professor Bogdan Małkowski, President of the Polish uh, Society of Nuclear Medicine, and Professor Leszek Królicki, National Consultant 
in nuclear medicine. I'm sorry, gentlemen, once again, for not doing that at the very beginning. Uh, after the break, we'll be listening to the presentations by Adam Grabowski uh, from the Quality Control Laboratory, Professor Janusz Braziewicz and Professor Anna Płachcińska. Uh, so we'll meet back at noon. Thank you.
I believe we can start. I will give you a minute or so just to take your seats to be able to take part in our today's meeting. So let's start in a minute. Uh, I'll give you a minute to get ready and then we'll start. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, after the break. I do hope that that you have had a nice uh, coffee break, whatever it means. Now I would like to invite Professor Anna Płachcińska to tell us about quality control uh, in nuclear medicine. and to provide us with a comparison between American and European guidelines. Professor, the floor is yours. Yes, could we ask you to switch your mic on and, and camera? Well, I think I have succeeded finally. Yes, 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 you have. Yeah, can you hear me? Can you see me? Just a second. Yes, yes, we can see you, Professor. Can you hear me? Yes, okay, okay, all right. Uh, Professor, yes, we can see you, we can hear you. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> I wanted to make a reference to the presentation of Dr. Marengo. Um, and uh, one of the quality control, uh, uh, quality assurance elements, uh, clinical audit was mentioned by Dr. Marengo. And, and uh, clinical audit is not something that the field where the performance is really impressive. I'd like to tell you that the European Commission currently has initiated, uh, has launched an initiative to bring uh, clinical audit forward under the auspices of the European Commission three associations, uh, European Radiological Association, uh, Radiotherapy Association and European Association of uh, Nuclear Medicine are currently working very intensely. Uh, so we, we should expect that in the early 2021, they will or we will send out a questionnaire which uh, with very in-depth questions uh, on the subject and this questionnaire will be sent out to many important institutions and people. Uh, so, so I think we should be getting ready to putting the clinical audit in place 
will be sort of forced to do that. Uh, that's as much as I wanted to add. I, I just wanted to update you when it comes to, to the issue of clinical audits. But the, my main subject is quality control of uh, devices and instruments. I will start with Europe because that's much closer to my heart. Uh, why should we control quality control in uh, why should we control instruments such as gamma cameras for example i think it's obvious but just to remind you uh, and to, to avoid uh, artifacts looking for artifacts uh, in images we need to double check instruments which should work uh, without producing artifacts so this is um from the International uh, Atomic Ag uh, Energy uh, Agency Quality Control Atlas, and it shows that it's not a good, good idea to perform images uh, without quality control. This is uh, uh, proper detector uniformity. This is excellent, that this image is excellent. Mm. Well, in addition, SPECT enhances non-uniformities of the detector, especially if we are working on filter back projection, filter back projection, which enhances strongly all uniformities, and to this end, the detector should be really very, very rigorously uh, controlled, uh, because otherwise this is hard examination, we can get cold fields uh, which in fact didn't uh, exist. That's one more reason why they should be, this should be double checked, especially in SPEC methodology. This is a uh, lung examination, there's a probably, mm, this is a totally incorrect image and um, Later, it turned out that this examination was registered with a camera with this kind of non-uniformity. This is, and, and when that was corrected, the uh, end result was quite correct. So we want to avoid these effects because if someone has spent many years in nuclear medicine, we know that one day it happens that something doesn't work in the detector, in the instrument, and then we have to double trace the moment when the problem occurred. Well, inspect center of rotation is also very important. Of course, detectors should rotate uh, around common center of rotation. For big detectors, it's practically uh, undoable. They need to be calibrated and uh, they, that needs to be really controlled very strictly. Otherwise, we would get strange images. Uh, which then lead to incorrect interpretation and if this center of rotation is uh, very much displaced instead of points, we will end up with circles, which really destroys the image. And we have to observe it very closely. So being aware of all that, the physics committee at the European Association of Nuclear Medicine, which which uh, I, I had the pleasure to be a member, back in 2008 decided to find out uh, about the state of quality control of the equipment used in nuclear medicine in Europe. And this examination was carried out for countries members of this association. And for this purpose, a questionnaire was developed and that it was sent out to all the uh, member countries of the association. So what could we find there in this questionnaire? Well, first of all, that was there was information or explanation why this uh, uh, information is being collected uh, 
addressees were also informed that the data will remain con confidential, that there will no comparisons will be made across countries. We just wanted people to not to be afraid to answer these questions and to answer them freely. What were, were these questions about? These questions, th this, this questioner uh, contained questions about all kinds of uh, equipment. And in this case, we have uh, a scintillation camera for whole body aspect modes. And we wanted the member countries to tell us whether what what tests they perform for this equipment, uh, within which periods, with what frequency, D for stands for daily, uh, weekly, monthly, uh, every second month, uh, every half a year, uh, other. So if, if, if these tests are carried out, how often uh, they do that? Uh, this is an, an, an answer, uh, an exemplary answer from a country. But there was another question about national guidelines, whether any national guidelines or uh, for these tests uh, have been developed, are they required by law, and whether at the national level there are protocols available for these tests. And this was a very detailed questioner, uh, and this is, these are further uh, questions concerning gamma cameras. Uh, they concerned all these tests. And here we even asked about whole body scanning. That is, we wanted to learn whether uniformity is tested, whether there is spatial resolution. Because if a patient moves, there may be some disturbances when it comes to uniformity and spatial resolution, although in fact it, 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 it is uh, performed very rarely. Gamma spect camera, this is, uh, these are questions for gamma spect camera. The first question concerned, the, the first question concerned the center of rotation, whether it is tested or, and, and calibrated. So all these tests uh, that we know, I, I'm not going to discuss all of them, because all these tests uh, are currently used in all these sets of tests uh, used for spectrum. These were times when attenuation correction was done using the external source because SPECT CT cameras were not so popular. So these are some questions relating to the external source, uh, but for SPECT CT attenuation correction, there was also a question to provide us with the protocol that was used for that. There were many questions concerning activity uh, meter. Again, I'm not going to discuss it in detail, but we were also asking questions concerning uh, sets for thyroid uptake probe and a special system for when blood samples are, are uh, taken. There are special sets for automatic gamma counting system and non-imagining intraoperative probes. They were all covered by, by the questions in the questionnaire. And, and what was found out? We received uh, responses from as many as 29 countries, that is almost all members of the association, of the European Association at that time. Only 20 out of them had national guidelines for quality 
control of the equipment in nuclear medicine and only and in 17 and only in 17 countries this kind of control was required by law what was the problem having uh, looked through all these answers uh, we decided that the major problem was the time discrepancy in the tests performed because there were very large time spans uh, between uh, between tests performs um, were performed that was for example especially for those calibrators in uh, one country this test was carried out uh, every day and in another country every six months uh, and in, in, in another case uh, once a year or every day so these are countries and these are frequencies with which these tests were, were carried out when it comes to planar cameras uh, such situations were also observed here we have a year every year or once a year spatial resolution once a year and here every week week so that, that there were big differences so because of that um, having considered that we decided that we need to develop guidelines that would regulate uh, what types of tests should be carried out and with what frequency and uh, that was published uh, as routine quality control recommendations for nuclear medicine instrumentation in the European Journal of Nuclear Medicine Molar Imaging, Imaging in twen back in 2010, on behalf of the Physics Committee of the European Association of Nuclear Medicine and a working group, which uh, uh, was also active at that time at this European Association. I double-checked it recently, so this publication was cited 78 times. And it was read according to research gate almost 2,000 times. It's it's a bit outdated. It, it probably should be updated, uh, especially when we are having new equipment, new devices, uh, semiconductor cameras, for example, uh, entering the market. But it's always it's 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 it continues to be cited because whenever there is a, a citation, I'm informed about it. So what could what, what were uh, what was there in these guidelines? That's the introduction. They stressed that these uh, recommendations should take account of national regulations, national guidelines, uh, national legislation. They also they included or they covered the types of tests that were expected to be performed and suggested frequencies but they di didn't and still don't specify the protocols that to be followed when carrying out these tests we stressed that uh, obviously these tests uh, should be carried out by appropriately qualified and trained staff in accordance with local operating procedures that should be written down for and used as part of routine work. In addition, uh, Threshold values should be set, uh, which, if exceeded, uh, should trigger a specific type of action. And also, they informed about who the decision maker is 
And so once again, test we can read that test procedures are not included in this document because that's not the purpose of it. And here, ladies and gentlemen, we can see all procedures that should be performed for gamma camera planner, whole body spect and spect CT. I, I, I think I'm not going to discuss these procedures because the, these are practically um, procedures which are very basic and can be found also in our national guidelines on quality control for the equipment. So there were instructions uh, or guidelines for planner, cameras, whole body and CT and that's these are more whole body procedures, spatial resolution yearly, on, on a yearly basis, uh, very rarely, I, but I don't think there are many uh, institu uh, institutes that would test it, and center of rotation for SPECT, uh, center of rotation calibration, if it is properly aligned, if not, then it should be calibrated, attenuation correction, and the overall system performance, usually using uh, Yashchak Phantom. And in this column, uh, you, we can see in relevant co comments uh, concerning aspects that need to be taken into account when performing the tests and also when writing the procedures for tests. The same was done for PET. That was also described uh, what procedures should be performed. PET and SPECT CT for diagnostic purposes. Uh, that is uh, CT, not, not low dose CT, but full diagnostic CT. Radionuclide calibrator. Um, all procedures that need to be carried out. Thyroid uptake probe and uh, non imaging uh, intraoperative uh, probe. Plus obviously in vitro manual or automatic ga uh, gamma counting systems that, that are used for samples taken from the patient's body and radiation monitoring instruments such as radiometers that are used to detect contamination. Here uh, in, in, in this document there were many references and, and the Lit its literature was very rich, so I haven't quoted all of them. There, there are many more, but of course we referred to NEMA standards, to IEC standards, International Electro Electrotechnical Commission, to International Atomic Energy Agency uh, publications. So based on that, we can develop detailed protocols that are used to in tests, uh, in quality control tests for instruments. But at some point, it turned out that the acceptance uh, tests uh, need to be described. They were described a little bit later, but not very much later, but these acceptance issues are, are also referred to. Um, they are referred to in the same journal. They are also quoted. Uh, there, are, there is a smaller number of uh, citations, but acceptance testing is performed much more rarely, but, but they are quoted and uh, until to date and they are still being read. So here again they are listed test by after test uh, what uh, acceptance testing should be carried out. I'm not going to bore you to death uh, with discussing 
all of them, but th these are all for gamma cameras. Well, okay, so that's, uh, that, that happened 10 years ago. In the meantime, in the European Association of Nuclear Medicine, there is a technolo technologists committee which is very active and back in 2017 they put together a brochure you, you can see its cover its, its, its front page it's uh, described in a slightly different way because uh, here we can find explanations this is the table of contents uh, but this, this but, but the document basically this publication explains what these tests are for daily qc tests and 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 further it's explained what they are used for and what kind of quality control tests should be carried out so it's it's a more didactic uh, publication uh, we have daily tests Sorry, I, I cannot see it clearly either. But here we have weekly quality control tests, uh, quarterly annual tests, quality control tests. So um, quarterly and annual tests. They are. They are described here and discussed in detail so it's a kind of update of what we had written 10 years ago but the objective of this uh, publication is to explain to technicians and technologists what they should do when they should do it and why they should do it that so that's that's as much as i know uh, when it comes to what's going what's happening in europe um, director encouraged me to say something about what's going on in the United States but I'd like to tell you to start with I'd like to tell you that I by no means I feel an expert in the field but I can share with you uh, what I have found on the internet and uh, um, what I have learned from a colleague of mine working in the United States. I will tell you what I have man what, what kind of knowledge I have managed to collect. In 2019, uh, in the United States, uh, American Association of uh, Physic uh, Physicists in Medicine uh, publishes quite of frequently reports uh, this is uh, the report number 177, so these reports are quite frequent. And this associ association decided to put together guidelines for acceptance testing and for routine recommendations for routine tests for gamma camera aspect, aspect CT systems in this particular report. So what, ca what can we find in the introduction? So we can read here that they we can learn from it that they are aware of the fact that historically, even in the United States, uh, a rather a small proportion of gamma camera systems undergo acceptance testing. So why is that so? And the reason is that, um, you will see it on the next slide, And the reason is that um, the authors of this publication, they sent, uh, they surveyed uh, experts, uh, medical physicists in the United States, uh, and they sent out a um, questionnaire to them asking these uh, expert medical physicists uh, uh, and the sample included uh, 343 physicists and scientists. Uh, that was, uh, the, the whole exercise was carried out under the auspices of this American Association of Physicists in Medicine and the Society of Nuclear Medicine. And they received responses from 46 
physicists and these people asked if when asked if acceptance tests should be a in a carried out in a simplified version 100% of the respondents said yes so why are these accept wh why is this acceptance um, testing not carried out often it's because it's quite a complex uh, thing to do it uh, requires a complex uh, set of phantoms to carry out these tests so everyone was in favor of simplifying these acceptance testing um, so a document was created in which these tests uh, are described broken down into routine tests for gamma cameras uh, plan gamma planner cameras and spec systems and here we can find tests that uh, whose names fa sound familiar to us we we all we carry out them uh, and these routine tests uh, are carried out with specific frequencies uh, some daily other weekly monthly quarterly and etc etc annual tests uh, are listed here and they require more effort and uh, they control factors which uh, are not so defective or elements that are not so effective and that, that's the continuation of the list of annual sectors uh, annual tests I'm sorry and these are this is a these are acceptance tests quite a long list but what's the difference between this publication and uh, and, and uh, guidelines that we have in europe you will you will see it more quick more clearly in the part addressing pets these tests are described in great details these are not guidelines uh, about what should be tested but they are described in detail uh, not only what should be tested but also how it should be tested and this is sometimes a challenge because uh, um, it's not easy to describe it in such great detail uh, because we have different manufacturers who have different requirements concerning testing but that's how they did it so at the, at the national level, not, not at the level of individual states, but at the general level, of, at, at the national level, these tests are described in great details. And the same was done for PET-CT. That's uh, called acceptance testing and quality assurance. Although, in fact, uh, uh, when you read it, you can see that the, that's not only acceptance testing, but also routine tests. And here we can see this table shows tests. They are listed in the first column, and they, then they are broken down into those which are carried out daily, weekly, quarterly, semi-annually, and annually. And uh, what's the philosophy behind it? They believe that acceptance testing should be all these tests should be carried out as accept under the heading of acceptance uh, testing and values obtained should become reference points for further routine tests uh, conducted uh, with adequate frequency and here I just wanted to show you that these are very that, that, that they are really described uh, at length and in great details including um, specific uh, activities what should be done uh, what, what that, that you have the capacity of a syringe or Capillaries, capillary tubes are described uh, in details and it's not only 
and you can not only learn from learn from it what should be used for a specific test but there are also drawings of photographs which show how how for example capillary tubes should be placed in what distances nema tests were the starting point but uh, as postulated by the respondents surveyed uh, uh, as part of this uh, questionnaire study, uh, they postulated to sim simplify it, and I, and I think that this is a good approach to, 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 to the problem. So here you can read uh, how to perform these tests, uh, specific tubes, uh, distances, where placed, how placed, and then a phantom filled with uh, diverse materials, how they should be placed in the phantom, the image, uh, how what it should look like, not only, it, it, it's assessed not only visually, but also there is a qualitative assessment. These are image contrasts, uh, the threshold values, the limit values. So, at the national level, at the federal level, there are very, th there are tests described in great details. We don't have it in Europe. But I should. I, I think we should. We should. Th this is how it should be done. Uh, but you, Europe differs from the United States. Uh, individual countries have different possibilities. Uh, so final decisions should be left to individual countries when it comes to concrete procedures, control, quality control procedures. At the national level, we can find descriptions of procedures that should be done, but these detailed procedures for the equipment, they are created by individual institutions or departments or centers that use it. That's the difference between the uh, United States and, and Europe. That's as much as w as I was uh, mm, as I have been able to find out. That's that's all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. I'd like to encourage you to ask questions uh, and to raise your hands. And Piotr, yes, thank you. Yes, I just want to see everything. Uh, Professor, thank you. Thank you very much for your very exhaustive presentation of uh, devoted to different tests. We very often compare ourselves, we uh, being part of the European Union, we compare ourselves to the United States on many occasions. And what you said at the very end uh, is, is really very true. That is, it, it, it's difficult to, um, to transpose everything that we think is a good practice from the United States to Europe, especially to, to these new EU member states. Not it's not always the case that something that has uh, been that has proven itself in other places can be uh, used successfully here and it's not it's not always the case that whatever comes from the united states is better yeah, from their point of view it's it's always better but it's it's the outcome of of the compromise because because their operations are based on compromise that's due to their history but what i would like to draw your attention to professor has given us an example from the united states and i miss it in europe and especially in po and in poland in particular that uh, 
research and scientific associations, you gave an example of American technologists who uh, who produce reports uh, quite often and uh, within a very specific field of quality control. But, but what I miss really as a representative of the National Center, I miss such reports uh, that would be developed and uh, published by Polish scientific societies or associations. Because I, what, I, what I would like to stress is the fact that you cannot transpose uh, directly good practices or regulations from one country to another without paying attention to how it could be implemented in another country. We meet, uh, uh, as you know, Professor, we meet whenever new uh, laws are being worked on or new regulations. But from our perspective, it would be really very much helpful if we could uh, use reports, publications uh, drafted here in Poland uh, for our reality, for problems that we are meeting um, in our everyday practice. Uh, something that also we would be able to implement into uh, the regulations. And here I, uh, I must say that, that I would like to, that I'm expecting the nuclear medicine community, but also other scientific communities to come up with such reports uh, or considerations. These tests uh, are also uh, discussed uh, in greater or smaller detail, and they are some are more difficult, some less. But mm, but again, in Poland, we uh, look at regulations only. If there is something written down in regulations, then we do it. If if it is not mentioned in the regulations. We don't do it. Uh, maybe I, that's a too far-reaching generalization, but uh, everybody wants this, that, and something else to be put into uh, regulations. But, but uh, the fact that, that this or that is mentioned in the regulations doesn't change anything. Good practices can change our routines and our practice. And acceptance testing in Poland uh, acceptance testing is uh, features in the regulations in a very general way. So you can perform any kind, any set of tests uh, as long as they are referred to as acceptance tests. Uh, that's okay. These are all tests uh, that are carried out after uh, on the first installation or uh, upon reinstallation. And the regulations do not specify it very clearly. And I'm not referring to nuclear medicine uh, specifically, but I, I'm speaking of all aspects relating to the field of ionizing radiation. But everybody wanted this acceptance testing to be discussed, uh, to, to, be, to be inscribed uh, in greater detail. We just want it uh, in the regulation to, to have a statement that acceptance testing is for finding out whether what we have bought and are going to install is what we really intended to have. Acceptance testing is not to tell us that we have bought something extraordinary or fantastic uh, or safe. That's another point, that, that's, that's another aspect, but th they are only to tell us whether we have bought what we really intended to, uh, to have. That, that's, uh, yeah, of course I agree, but we need to think whether, we need to have a list of uh, acceptance tests. No, 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 not at all, not at all. I wouldn't, I, yeah, of course. But th that would uh, incur a lot of work and in addition, we are having uh, new detectors, new equipment, uh, semiconductor gamma cameras. They are uh, built in a completely different way. They, they, are, they will be tested in a completely different way. So I would rather up update what we have uh, rather than describing uh, uh, 
the acceptance testing. No, no, no. I think there is some misunderstanding. Uh, I haven't made myself uh, understood. In Poland, we are very much, uh, we, we rely heavily on regulations, on written law, uh, and we don't pay so much attention to good practices, especially in medicine. And I, I don't think that it's good. But um, you can't, uh, you can't identify everything, and uh, especially in medicine, when you say that if you use mini becquerels, that's okay. If you exceed it by ten percent, it's bad. It all depends on. Uh, it, it, it all should be decided on a case of, or, or in a case uh, on case basis. Uh, but acceptance testing so far is as it is, and I hope that that uh, the entire community working with uh, ionizing radiation in medicine that these tests should be carried out the way in the way decided by physicists working for a particular department or for a particular institution. Yes, a physicist must be present. It cannot be the case that a service comes, that they bring in new equipment, they carry out of the tests, and then they say, well, it's all fine, thank you very much. You must have a physicist from the side of the buyer. Oh, I'm sorry. We have lost the connection. Yes, can you hear me? C can you hear me, Professor? Can you, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Professor. Yes, uh, b b before I get disconnected again, I have some problems with the connection. Yes, uh, when acceptance testing is uh, being carried out, a physicist must be present there. Okay, okay, Professor, there is a question, there is a question. I'm not sure how to, how, this is a question from Claudia Kuczynska. Yes, we can hear, uh, we, we can see you. Uh, I, I'd like to ask you whether after the recommendations from 2010, uh, the improvement has been monitored in individual countries and why there were such big differences between respondents. No, uh, we, didn't, we didn't monitor the effect of recommendations from 2010. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, no study in this direction has been, has been uh, carried out. But since these recommendations were issued, uh, we should hope, or maybe more, more than hope, that countries uh, uh, are following them, and, and that the same can be said about the frequency of such tests. Uh, so I hope that these differences now they have been reduced. Well, it's 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 difficult to um, to double check it really. Yes, probably a kind of committee or any other body at, any, at, at the European Association should look into it. But I don't think that, hasn't, that has been initiated. But in recommendations, in national recommendations, I hope that, that, that these recommendations are included. I can only hope that it's close, that, that, that we are all closer to this uh, guideline, that it has brought us closer to them than before. But no study was conducted um, to this end. Yes, uh, Professor, that, but, but again, I think that this is the problem of uh, the activity carried out by national associations or national societies. We shouldn't look at Europe, at the United States, at what they are doing. There are different projects, programs uh, that are comparing countries uh, between themselves. So you just told us, Professor, that this was a study conducted uh, internally, but uh, 
but it seems that that this is a problem that should be managed by national associations, national societies. We here at the National Center, we, we would re really expect them to do so, because to, it, it, is, it is often difficult to us to make things happen, to, to inscribe something into the regulations, uh, for example, if we don't have any scientific foundations for, for such suggestions. We are very often asked, uh, what, it is, what is it like in other countries? And we just share our opinion. I can say, well, I talked to Professor this and that, and they believe that we should do it like this or like that. So this is a letter in which they inform me that, that this is how we should do it. And then a question is asked, what's the situation like in other countries? And if we could uh, have uh, some kind of material, background material prepared by scientific associations uh, or reports by, by, by our scientific associations dealing with uh, medical exposure, that would be really a fundamental uh, assistance to us. Uh, yes, I can only agree with, with what you've said. Yes, that, that's, that's, that's what it should be like. Well, uh, we've uh, exceeded uh, the time of our session. Now it's, uh, we'll break for lunch. Uh, I hope you, uh, all of us will have a lunch in real uh, life rather than online. So we'll be having lunch break until quarter past two. At, and at quarter past two, we'll start uh, with the next uh, presentation by Dr. Adam Grabowski from the... National Center from our center. Thank you very much.
właśnie. Dziękujemy. Dobra, to teraz ja, ale ja nic nie słyszę. Słyszysz coś? Słyszysz? Nie, nie, nie. To tak, to też widzę pana dyrektora. No to nic nie słychać, właśnie. Ja też nie. Co, bo pan dyrektor, nie, bo pan dyrektor ma wyłą wyłączył się, nie idź do panu. Pan dyrektor po prostu ma wyłączony mikrofon. Uh, I'm afraid I cannot hear the speaker because his mic is switched off. A może, może o to chodzi, że jeszcze nie 14.15 jest. Uh, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome after the lunch break. I hope that not all of you have believed in a 20-minute uh, break. We had one hour and 20-minute uh, break as planned uh, in our agenda. So now uh, let's change the screens. Thank you. Before we start uh, the next presentation, I would like to remind you that there are two forms uh, of uh, contributing your comments, comments or questions after each speech. So you can uh, either send us a message via chat box, and then your message uh, will be sh visible on the screen, or you can raise uh, the hand. So to raise your hand, you have to click uh, on the right hand side the bottom mm, box. Uh, once you have asked your question uh, or contribute a comment, please uh, remember uh, to uh, re, uh, re, uh, reuse uh, the hand icon and then uh, clear your statues. Now I would like to welcome Mr. Adam Grabowski, who represents the National Center for Radiation Protection in Healthcare. Uh, Mr. Grabowski will be telling us about uh, the current regulations on uh, tests of uh, quality control in nuclear medicine in Poland. He will also present our experience uh, relating uh, to implementation of these regulations and he will present our experience. So Mr. Grabowski, the floor is yours. The platform is yours. Thank you. 
Thank you for this introduction. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, everyone. laboratory in the National Center for Radiation Protection. Uh, I think it's enough in English, so let's speak Polish. Zgodnie z przyjętą tutaj procedurą. Szanowni Państwo, tematem mojego dzisiejszego kania i wykładu dla Państwa in my lecture, I'll be talking about the specialized QC tests in the field of nuclear medicine, current regulations and laboratory experience in QA laboratory in NCRP in HC in Poland. So the topic, uh, okay, the, the title of the presentation is repeated in Polish. Ladies and gentlemen, in general, uh, we are operating in terms of specialist tests based on the legal basis, basis, which is the regulation of the Minister of Health of 18 February 2011 on the conditions for the safe use of ionizing radiation for all types of medical exposure. So you can find this regulation, the Journal of Laws of 2017, item 884. Uh, so the previous speakers were uh, talking about this subject. Professor Płachcińska uh, was mentioning the acceptance uh, test. Uh, we also had uh, a discussion during which uh, we were looking at uh, different uh, tests, uh, test basic tests and specialist uh, uh, tests. And we are focused on the specialist test delivered by labs. Uh, which employ employees who operate under a specific regime and uh, they are usually uh, working based on the ISO system, quality system. At the end of my presentation, I will uh, refer to this uh, issue again. On this slide, you can, see, you can see a list of devices that are listed in this regulation. There is also a list of specialized uh, tests uh, used uh, in nuclear medicine. From left to right, you can see different uh, devices. I have also used different uh, colors to refer to the specific types of equipment in uh, next slides. So the, the first uh, equipment, uh, uh, we are talking about well-type ionization chamber for measurement of total activity. This is a very important piece of equipment. It allows us to prepare the activities for all nuclear medicine tests. So uh, this uh, equipment is very important uh, uh, for, for tests and also for our daily operations, operations of laboratories that specialize in nuclear medicine. There is, uh, and uh, mm, what is very important is the accuracy of measurement. Uh, uh, next to par uh, types of equipment are pl planar scintillation cameras and uh, SPECT cameras. So uh, here we are looking in the in the second column in the second column in the equipment with the second column we are focused on the pixel size and uh, sensitivity of the system uh, for the last uh, type of equipment uh, we are looking at other parameters. Let's discuss the tests in general. You should treat my speech as a summary which shows you what is done, how it should be uh, done. There are also some procedures that uh, are used to make sure that everything uh, is done 
appropriately or there are some de deviations. So there is uh, the well-typed dose uh, calibrator. So activity measurement accuracy test. Uh, so we want to check the accuracy and we are checking the measurement accuracy of the tested activity meter by comparison with a calibrated uh, meter. Uh, it is performed when the meter has not been calibrated for, the pe uh, for a period m longer than a year. And also there are some activity measurements in the range. And the last item is the type of equipment used for this kind of test. In our uh, lab, uh, we've got a German device, PTW Curie Mentor, Four device, so the main uh, co the, mm, com the, the, the main component is the cylindrical well chamber in a cover, 3.8 millimeters. Uh, it is um, it is housed in a special uh, container. Uh, which contains argon in overpressure independent of atmospheric pressure. And there is also a lineator, lineator for placing samples in a uh, well. To test that source, we've got such a source, it is such a source at the center. It is uh, related with, the, uh, with some specific uh, isotopes. And we are checking the meter before measurements, before and after calibration. We are also focused on the current calibration. So we are using the device in this testing equipment to make sure that it, uh, the measurements uh, are taken before and after. And we are using CS137 TC99 and you can see and we are only using the isotopes that are listed on this slide. Here in this picture, you can see a meter, well type dose calibrator, 3 millimeters 0.4. It consists of a measure, measurement uh, panel. Uh, you can also uh, see uh, some, some probes. Uh, you can see how to set uh, required parameters. And this is combined with the scintillator. And there is a LED uh, cover. So there are two tubes shown here. Uh, they are most frequently used in the labs. They are uh, so um, the radionuclides are usually in syringes or in vials. So the syringes have to be placed uh, accurately to make sure that the geometry uh, related requirements are met. Uh, and uh, there are uh, also some forceps you are using for, uh, for the application. So we are performing this uh, test uh, for, for all uh, radionuclides. So uh, what you have to do is to set meter working parameters. We have, it depends uh, whether a radion nuclide is in a syringe or in a vial. Then we, uh, then, uh, we are tested ra radion nuclides uh, with clinically used activities. If so, we are, if there are different activities of a, different ra uh, of a given radion nuclide, uh, uh, three activities uh, are selected. So we are measuring uh, the activity of the radionuclide. Then we perform for the test. Uh, we also perform tests for the tested activity meter. Uh, we also meet with the cust with, a cust with the customer representative. We are checking the correction factor. These factors are necessary for the purpose of uh, calculation. We also determine whether the activity values indicated by the activity meter being tested are. Uh, corrected in terms of the background. Here you can see a formula which shows us how to compute uh, these uh, values. What is important is that the regulation lays down some criteria. So the main benchmark uh, criterion is uh, 
gamma ray is it concerns gamma radiation sources with energies greater than uh, 100 uh, kilo electron volts. Uh, the meter accuracy is maximum 5%. For beta and gamma radiation sources with energies up to uh, 100, the meter accuracy is up to uh, 10%. So there are different values of energies. Th that was only an example. Now let's proceed with the planar scintillation cameras, uh, cameras, spec, spec, CT cameras. The first two texts are performing the same way. The difference is As, as, regards, uh, as regards the text, the, the performance of the contact of the test is the same. So first of all, we are determining uh, matrix pixel uh, size. Then we are checking the difference in pixel size values measured along the X and Y axis. Uh, we are checking the deviation of the pixel size from the nominal uh, value, measuring the distance between the centers of point sources in the range 50 to 1,000 millimeters. And what is most important is this difference in specialist uh, tests, in terms of specialist tests. Uh, it's a typical physical uh, test. In this case, we are um, me making, taking the measurements using the imaging. So we are testing the images. So our equipment includes tape measure, contamination meter. This meter is also uh, used when we are checking, verifying activity. It uh, helps to establish the contamination. And we are checking the heads, whether they are not contaminated. We are also checking, verifying the, the state, the condition of the environment. And what is very Im important, in in, in terms of this uh, mm, testing, we, uh, uh, we, we check uh, image analysis software in DICOM format. So in Polish hospitals, uh, we are commonly using these programs, this software, to calculate, to present the current status of the equipment. We are also making the test for each head uh, and each clinically used uh, matrix. So we are looking at the clinical values. We have to obtain the information uh, from the operators, from, from people who, who use specific uh, device in a specific clinical facility. So we need to specify the nominal pixel size corresponding to the given matrix. We are usually using collim uh, collimators that are most commonly used uh, in clinical environment. We are using two or four point sources with activity in the, in the range uh, 10 to 20 uh, megabecquerels. Uh, point sources uh, are placed on the collimator surface along the X and Y X, X, I, X axis as close as possible to uh, 5 centimeters from the given edge of the field of view. If you are interested in the details, you can contact me. I'll be happy to provide you uh, with additional information. Then we measure distances between the centers of point sources lying in one line. So we also have to gather some information on the type uh, of equipment, how it should be um, uh, checked. We are, for example, uh, setting the energy window for the rad radionuclide used. No zoom procedure is used, um, and we also disable uniformity correction function. Number of counts, uh, so you can see the number of counts for two sources, for four sources. In this uh, picture, you can see the system of four sources, four syringes, that are partly filled uh, with a suspension of uh, uh, a specific uh, ray, uh, isotope. So this is a very specific situation. Additionally, we are using a film, a foil, uh, to avoid contamination. So we need to remember that it should be checked uh, be, be before the, foil has, the film has been uh, taken, and after it has been taken. So we have to use that indicates contamination level.
I'm afraid I cannot hear the speaker. Trzeba powiedzieć, nie, tutaj nie ma, nie ma przekreślonej kreski. Chyba coś jest, wiesz co, z złączem. Tak, coś tam. So we've got some technical problems uh, and uh, hopefully we will be able to resolve this problem quite soon. I hope that the slide you have, uh, that you have seen the slide. So let's proceed with the next slide. Under this text, Test, we have to calculate uh, the pixel size. You can see the formulas used and what is in, uh, but finally we get the value of deviation. So we are looking at the nominal value of the pixel taken from the system. So again, we have to gather some uh, information on the device we are testing and we have to find the criterion in the regulation of the Minister of Health. So the pixel size deviations from the manufacturer's values a maximum of plus minus 10%. And we are also looking at the differences of values uh, uh, concerning the pixel size. You can see a formula, and there's also reference to the regulation of the Minister of uh, Health. So the difference in pixel size values measured along the x and y axis is maximum plus, nine, uh, plus minus five uh, percent. So this is uh, this is another test which uh, verifies sensitivity of the system. So we have to determine system sensitivity. We have to find the response to a source with known activity. We are checking the system sensitivity deviations from the reference value activity measurement in the range 0 0.01 megabecquerels to 50 gigabecquerels. We are also measuring the total number of counts in the ROI in the range to 4 times 10 to power 6. Equipment. A container that is filled with TC99M solution. It is a closed container to avoid contamination of the head. Activity meter, contamination uh, meter, a rack for attaching this container, and something that is very important, a special software to uh, analyze the image in DICOM format. So we are obtaining images, and then we are analyzing this image, these images in DICOM format. We are doing it for our customers, clients. So uh, this test is performed for each head. We specify the reference value of the system sensitivity. Collimator, mostly, most commonly used clinically for testing with TC99M. We are also measuring the background value in an injection. We are preparing a TC99M solution with approximately four, 40 megabecquerels activity in uh, we are measuring uh, the activity of this solution and uh, record the hour of activity measurement, the time of activity measurement. Uh, so uh, we want to uh, determine the sensitivity. Uh, then we place the solution, con the, cont the container with solution in relation to the collimator, collimator surface, as in the case of reference measurements. Contents of the syringe is injected into the container to completely cover the bottom of the container uh, at the level of approximately three millimeters. And we measure the remaining uh, activity in the syringe. syringe. We, uh, uh, we, we save the acquisition starting time, then we save the duration of the acquisition. Uh, then we remove this container with solution and perform the acquisition, acquisition for the same matrix and the same acquisition time as when measuring with the container. Acquisition parameters, again, we are talking to the operators of the devices. It's the same as for reference measurement. So again, we are looking at the energy window on photo peak for TC99M, matrix of the most clinically used size. We are uh, disabling uniformity correction function. And uh, 
the number of counts uh, has been also uh, provided. So we uh, finally, at the end, uh, we obtain some result, uh, results and uh, we compare uh, the values. Uh, next text test uh, checks the tomographic spatial resolution in the air. So for this purpose, uh, we use what we have to do, we have to look at the uh, planar resolution and tomographic resolution of the camera. We are checking the deviation of the tomographic resolution for directions A, X and Y from the tomographic resolution for direction Z and the planar resolution for direction X. We are also measuring the distance on the image profile. The equipment we are using, contamination meter, stand for fixing the point source. Here we have only one uh, source and we, uh, we analyze the image. On this slide, um, uh, you can see the test for tomographic spatial resolution in the air for all clinically commonly used collimators. And this is what it looks like. You can see it in the pictures on the left hand side. You can see the stand at the end of the stand. Uh, there is a handle with the uh, point uh, source and on the right hand side you can see a point source in a syringe. Uh, we set acquisition parameters, energy windows on the photo peak for the radion nuclide used. Uh, we also look at the matrix of the most clinically used size, camera rotation radius as small as possible, circular rotation. We also establish number of angles most commonly used clinically. Uh, we have to cooperate with the operators again. We also then need to elaborate the results, image reconstruction using back projection and RAM filter of the sharpest uh, image. And we have to establish the difference. And then we compare against the benchmark, benchmark laid down in, a, in, the, in the regulation of the minister of the division of the tomographic resolution specified by the FWHM of the profile of the reconstructed image. Uh, system tomographic uniformity. For this test, uh, we are using the Yashchak Phantom. You probably all know, maybe not everybody knows, but in this, uh, in this context, we are using the basic test. Uh, but we only perform this part of the test uh, that is uh, that uh, addresses uniformity. So all the in parts in stern, in, in inside of the phantom are uh, uh, removed. We are using the uh, tape measure, contamination meter, construction lev level, and then we again um, use the software to analyze the image. Here on the left hand side you can see the Yashchak uh, device, it's prepared for the basic test of uniformity. On the right hand side uh, you can see the contamination meter and no additional elements are included in the second picture. So Yashchak Phantom has to be filled with water, then you need to add a solution of radionuclide TC99M. Usually we are using, uh, uh, using LEGP collimators and LEHR collimators, so the solution has to be uh, mixed thoroughly and some 10 to 15 liters uh, are necessary. Then the phantom has to be placed on the table to make sure that it is as close as possible to the end of the table and the long axis. Uh, acquisition parameters are as follows. What is important, the number of projections uh, uh, should be as close, uh, uh, of projections must commonly used clinically. What is important is the contrast of circular artifacts. 
So here we are working on images. Uh, we identified the homogeneous area. We specified the number of visible circular artifacts. Artifacts for each layer of the uniform area. We specified the number of visible circular artifacts. Finally, we identified the contrast. And from all these uh, values, we choose the largest value from all values. And this larger values is then referred to the benchmark. The contrast between any circular artifact and the homogeneous background is mm, a maximum 10%. And then we are looking at the difference between the middle and uh, the edge pixel values. We have to calculate these uh, values. Uh, so we again, we determine the difference uh, uh, between the middle value and the edge values of the number of counts per pixel. And then we, uh, again, looking at the benchmark laid down in the uh, regulation of the Minister of Health. Yet this maximum value is 10% again. So all these tests uh, I am uh, presenting concern nuclear med medicine. This, this test is a radiological test performed in the following way. So if a SPECT camera uh, contains a CT module used for diagnostic uh, purposes, so for this uh, module we perform all specialized tests provided for CTs. So if this module is used only for the purpose of localization of changes visible in the spec tests and correction of radiation absorption special we only perform two tests high voltage test and volume tomographic dose index ctdi volume i have uh, <laughs> I have tried to present all uh, these tests uh, uh, in terms of nuclear medicines performed in Poland. What is important, uh, we perform measurements in a team of two persons. We always have uh, a representative uh, of our client who operates the device on the test and sets the expected parameters for individual tests. So we uh, the samples with activity are prepared by the client's personnel as indicated by the measurement team and under the preparation for the perform performance of the specialist test we agree the method of acceptance of the criterion, the criterion that is laid down in the regulation of the Minister of Health. Uh, of course, we have to uh, address all uh, the uncertainty values and we have to follow a specific principle how to approach the result and we are using uh, the, uh, the principle of simple acceptance. We also need to measure environmental conditions for each test. I would also like to mention the work of our laboratory. Uh, it is located in the quality control uh, department at the National Center for Radiation Protection in Healthcare. We have been accredited by the Pori Center for Accreditation. We meet requirements of the ISO standard IEC uh, 17025 um, uh, standard, so we have been accredited. We perform all specialist uh, tests for the purpose of nuclear medicine uh, that are specified in the regulation of the Minister of Health. In Poland, there are only two uh, labs that are accredited uh, in terms of nuclear medicine specialized tests. All the uh, uh, laboratories are listed uh, in our website. Uh, we've got a very specific situation. So uh, during our daily work, uh, we are using the principle of radiological uh, protection because this is very important uh, in terms of the work uh, by nuclear medicine departments. We also additionally have to follow all uh, recommendations concerning antivirus protection. You can see um, a publication uh, that has been uh, elaborated by the International Atomic Energy Agency in uh, Vienna. We following. We we do follow these recommendations. Thank you very much for your attention. And this is uh, the door of our lab. Thank you very much.
for a quite an exhaustive uh, lecture concerning our regulations and technology of performing specialist uh, tests in the field of nuclear medicine. Are there any questions? I am checking whether there are any hands up. No questions. Nobody wants to share a question or a comment. We have a small delay. Therefore, I would like to thank you for your presentation. Nowadays, we have a problem. On the one hand, it's easier to perform the test of quality uh, control due to the availability of the equipment, but on the other hand, uh, the epidemic uh, has introduced a, a lot of restrictions by hospitals, by nuclear medicine departments, where such measurements can be made. But we also have some restrictions. So we, as the National Center for Radiation Protection in Healthcare, we have to follow these uh, restrictions for our own good. So thank you for your lecture. And now we have 10 minutes break at, at 3 p.m. We will start the last lecture of today. This lecture will be delivered by, pro delivered by Professor Braziewicz. So we will commence the next uh, session at 3 p.m. Thank you. Napisie kawki.
Dziewicz to uh, to show up. Could we see Professor from the Oncology Center in Świętokrzyskie Province? Yes. Good afternoon, Professor. Could could you switch your mic? Yes, yes, your mic is on. Could you please uh, turn it up slightly? Oh, I'm afraid it's it's off. It's off again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I will try to speak up. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Professor. Uh, we have the honor to listen to your presentation on quality control tests and procedures in nuclear medicine uh, and to the comparison of uh, guidelines uh, for Poland and international guidelines. And th this is what we've been discussing since the morning. The floor is yours, Professor. Thank you. I will try to During my presentation, I would like to focus mainly on Polish guidelines and make some references to international guidelines, but, but I will not discuss them in gr at great length because th they were discussed by uh, Professor uh, Płachcińska. But uh, tests and procedures, that is the main subject of our meeting, are different for different types of nuclear medicine centers in Poland. Altogether, we have around 70 uh, centers of uh, nuclear medicine, and we can divide them into three types. That is, there are classic centers with PET scanners uh, and um, classic centers that are also working with PET technique, but we have also centers which uh, produce radiopharmaceuticals. Uh, they produce radiopharmaceuticals for the needs of nuclear medicine. And here we need to bear remember also about the production for the so-called classical uh, nuclear medicine. All of these centers are either represent the public or the private sector. When it comes to the equipment, uh, this equipment is covered by acceptance uh, testing and uh, quality control testing, so altogether uh, there are over 120 gamma cameras or other cameras that are used in therapeutical procedures. We have also about 30 P, uh, PET CT or PET uh, MRE scanners and seven centers where ra radio pharmaceutical, PET radio pharmaceuticals are produced uh, in the public and private sector. And there are also some places where radio pharmaceuticals, uh, classical pharm classic pharmaceuticals are uh, manufactured, are produced. But the number of quality control tests uh, that have to be performed depends on the status of each individual center uh, of nuclear medicine. But in general, the scope and frequency of tests uh, is uh, decided by law. So, so before, before we go to the heart of, of the presentation, well, let's spend a while on the 
staff of uh, nuclear medicine centers. It's also regulated by the regulation of the Minister of Health. And this is uh, a particular regulation adopted in 2016. In this regulation, we can read that both in classic and in pet centers of nuclear medicine, within the structure, there need to be a position of uh, medical physicist. And also, so a medical physicist has to be employed in classical centigraphic uh, laboratories, but also in SPECT uh, laboratories, but also in PET laboratories. So in all these cases, it, there is also a definition of a laboratory where, where radiopharmaceuticals are being prepared. We don't have uh, any provisions for MRE specs, but that's a side remark. However, this regulation doesn't identify the scope of responsibilities or the background education of a medical physicist. But coming back to the heart of our lecture, in order to ensure the correctness of tests and procedures, uh, there are some um, obligations uh, laid down in the Act on Atomic Law and also the uh, information of the Minister of Health on safe use of ionizing radiation in all types of medical ex exposure and I will refer to this circular um, later on. Polish legal regulations are consistent uh, with the directive of the Council, the directive that has already been referred to today, that is Directive 2013-59 Euratom, referred to shortly as BSS Directive. And. Uh, what can we read in this directive? It's Article 68 imposes uh, an obligation on the center to perform quality control tests for its equipment. In medical procedures, BSS directive uh, obliges to uh, to have an expert in medical physics in all medical practices. This directive also identifies quite precisely who an expert in, physical, uh, in medical physics is and his or her responsibilities. And that, of course, includes uh, an acceptance testing for radiological equipment. In the light of the currently binding Polish law, that is the Act on Atomic Law, the, an expert in medical physics means is also identified. The Polish law uh, reflected the provisions of the directive in the Act on Atomic uh, Law, uh, recently updated uh, by the end of 2019, and there are also uh, executive acts, uh, such as the uh, circular of the Ministry of Health. So the Atomic Law provides definitions of certain important terms while all issues relating to medical procedures uh, are included in general in the chapter in chapter 3 of this law and in its article 33h of the atomic law act in uh, its paragraph 7 we have a definition of um, medical 
a physicist in nuclear medicine. So this article defines uh, that certain tasks within a nuclear medicine center shall be performed by a person having specialist knowledge in physics, in medical physics. While in the next, in the following article, we can read that these tasks listed uh, in the previous article can be performed by either a specialist in medical physics or by a person who is further referred to as a medical physicist in nuclear medicine. We'll come back to it. This law mm, also mm, explains or lays down what kind of background knowledge and edu formal education the person should have to be a medical physicist. However, uh, there are certain gaps in it. It, it, it defines uh, who a medical physicist in nuclear medicine is. It's a person who has got a master degree in specific uh, fields of knowledge, a person who for two years, within the recent three years, has been dealing with this specific uh, type of jobs and who also has completed a spe special course for a medical ph physicist in nuclear medicine or has completed the so-called general uh, module and mm, nuclear medicine module uh, that uh, was offered in accordance with the curriculum for specialist training. So this is how uh, these knowledge requirements are identified. But at the same time, this law uh, authorizes accredited units to issue certificates to people who have completed these specific courses of module of the curriculum. Uh, so by virtue of law, these people are automatically referred to as medical physicists in nuclear medicine, if they have completed these courses. And this solution uh, included in atomic law doesn't completely solve the problem that laid at the foundations of uh, the establishing of this specific uh, curriculum for uh, medical physicists. Also, Article 33L of the Atomic Law is closely linked with uh, the quality control process for the equipment. This act identifies uh, uh, types of uh, acceptance tests, uh, basic tests and specialist tests that must be performed in the field of uh, nuclear medicine. It's paragraph four specifies situations when this equipment uh, is not approved to be used uh, uh, in uh, nuclear medicine if, if, if it doesn't conform with specific parameters. Article 33 also specifies what acceptance tests consist in and when they have to be performed. I think that this, these provisions are quite clear. It quite clearly tells us what uh, acceptance tests are about and, and we don't need any 
uh, more specific or more precise regulations. Further, Article 33 with respect to nuclear medicine uh, informs that basic tests can be performed by technicians in radio technolo uh, technology, but specialist tests have to be uh, performed by specific accredited, accredited units or specialists in medical physics or specialists in medical engineering who uh, work in medical health institutions. And, and this is probably uh, where the act is not very precise because in agreements that uh, were made quite some time ago, we decided the specialist tests uh, were to be uh, performed with the participation of uh, medical physicists only, because I believe that these are people who can understand and feel of aspects related to the use of equipment. And, uh, if and these tests have to be performed uh, uh, under the control of medical physicists, uh, but uh, medical physicists specializing in nuclear medicine have deeper knowledge in it. On the other hand, the possibility to perform specialist tests in nuclear medicine, even by a specialist in, in medical physics, uh, are not always uh, enough. So a medical institution must comply with conditions that are presented here on this slide. Of course, in medical nuclear medicine, the consistency of the measurement uh, is ensured where we have calibration testing of uh, the equipment, when we compare our results uh, to the norms, uh, we make references uh, to reference values, so we uh, confer we double check the traceability and repeatability of results. And when that is all documented, we comply with the uh, consistency requirement uh, for measurements. But it's not specified clearly what this uh, consistency, measurement consistency is about. If we assume that any of these procedures uh, is selected uh, uh, and is met, then we meet this condition anyway. But, 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 but I believe that at the stage of, test, of equipment testing, having this stage at all, uh, ensures conformity and cons while in but point to B that is where comparisons are made that's quite strange because uh, not less frequently than uh, every four years we have to perform, te tests have to be performed by specialists from another se uh, healthcare center. So the question is whether this specialist coming from another healthcare center, should this person perform all specialist tests or only selected tests? If all specialist tests uh, have to be performed by these external specialists. There are many misgivings um, with respect to that. Uh, 
So I, I, I'm not sure how this uh, regu how, how this provision should be met. But coming back to no, we, we, we've well, we've passed this already. But going more in depth, uh, Atomic Law Act uh, uh, imposes the obligation to perform tests for measuring equipment uh, uh, and for calibrating them that has to be done by all nuclear mass centers of nuclear medicine and that's being done but at the same time this act obliges the minister of health to identify the frequency of performing different types of tests and uh, the minister adopted a circular on conditions of safe use of ionizing radiation for medical exposure. And according to this circular, acceptance testing uh, should be performed after uh, equipment has been installed or, or after its major repair. For basic tests, uh, we have, uh, we can read here who can perform these tests. And these can be people authorized by the head of the uh, healthcare um, center and, and people who who are qualified to to operate radiological equipment. And also, uh, we have a list of tests, basic tests that uh, have to be performed with different frequencies. Here we can see absolute uh, measures of activity, thyroid uh, uptake probe, uh, scintillating probes uh, to measure gamma radiation, intraoperative probe, uh, planar camera, scintillating cameras, uh, all types of SPECT and SPECT CT camera tests and for basic tests, uh, PET and PET CT scanners. Uh, when it comes to specialist tests, uh, as I have already mentioned, these specialist tests, uh, uh, the per those who per can perform these uh, tests are also identified in this circular, while for nuclear medicine, for specialist tests, uh, there are f only these tests that you can see on the slide have been identified. Uh, so PC, uh, PET CT scanner is not included here. Of course, in the regulation, we can read what types of tests have to be performed for CT systems in hybrids. So if uh, uh, CT in hybrids is used only for the correction or localization, then we have a set, a limited set of tests. But when CT is used as diagnostic CT, then we have an obligatory, a set of obligatory set of tests, uh, diagnostic tests, as identified in the chapter for radiology. But the regulation of the Minister of Health, or the circular uh, of the Minister of Health, uh, obliges to perform tests for equipment other than listed in Annex 6, uh, that is what I have just shown you. Uh, and these tests 
are listed and tests different than those listed in the annex have to be performed in accordance with Polish norms, European norms, validated uh, research methods or manufacturer's instructions. So for each equipment or each device, auxiliary device tests included in um, manufacturer's manuals uh, are obligatory to us. Validated or validated recommendations of other institutions, so in accordance with that, we, we should perform them. And, for example, in the regulation of the Minister of Health, in the part devoted to nuclear medicine, we cannot find anything about quality control for descriptive stations that we use throughout the diagnosing process. These guidelines were developed only for the radiology chapter. We think that also that, that these um, tests should also be for performed for these stations in nuclear medicine because um, we need to have very efficient and well-performing equipment for, for, for the purpose of descriptive stations in nuclear medicine. They perform the same role as in imaging uh, diagnostics, so the same specialist tests or basic tests should apply to them. And they should be performed uh, and imposed either by virtue of internal regulations or uh, by virtue of recommendations adopted by uh, the association. We know that there are Polish and European norms that apply to them. So in accordance with them, we should perform these tests as well. Well, of course, radiopharmaceuticals are part of our work uh, in our nuclear medicine centers. And for radiopharmaceuticals, the regulation doesn't distinguish between classic scintigraphic nuclear medicine and nuclear medicine using PET scanners. It refers to conditions of using radiopharmaceutical products. And here, the main device is dosage calculator, referred to in the regulation of the Minister of Health, but there are also other auxiliary types of devices like uh, water baths, thermometers, uh, heat chambers and so on and so forth that should be tested as well. Deregulation imposes also quality control tests for radiopharmaceutical products, uh, that is those radiopharmaceuticals, without distinguishing between classical and PET radiopharmaceuticals. This regulation doesn't impose a type of uh, test. So, all together in the regulation where there is no difference uh, between scintographic or PET radiopharmaceuticals, they are all put together, so for this set of tests that we should perform for the sake of quality control of the entire diagnostic process or therapeutical process, uh, covered by the package of regulations, uh, we need to add to it the 
pharmaceutical law regulation and the regulation of the Minister of Finance on good practices, good practices in manufacturing updated recently uh, in 2017. But even without that, the what we can read in the regulation of the Minister of Health, they impose the need to control the chamber and uh, the quality of, of its performance and also it uh, imposes the need to test the bacteriological uh, purity of, of the chamber. But because uh, radio pharmaceuticals for nuclear medicine have to comply with certain provisions, we need to double check on these parameters, meaning we need to perform control tests of the equipment used to control these parameters, but also the equipment, the, but, but also the control of pharmaceutical products. For some pharmaceutical products, uh, to some pharma uh, pharmaceutical products, uh, pharmaceutical law will apply, obviously, which uh, in general, when read uh, literally, saves us from quality control for at least some products. But the question is whether giving up quality control for these products is a step in the right direction, and I will leave this question open. Of course, quality control in the production of uh, generator radio pharmaceuticals assumes that the preparation of radio pharmaceuticals uh, using uh, components from licensed materials and generators should take place according to the instruction of the manufacturers that can be found in the characteristics of medical products. We assume currently that this is the condition that, uh, imp that uh, puts uh, liability uh, for components on the manufacturer. But in general, it is recommended to carry out a prospective uh, control program for radioactive substances within plant regular quality control. So any radio pharmaceuticals manufactured for nuclear med medicine purposes should meet certain requirements, and these requirements relate to best practices which can be found in European, uh, in recommendations by the European Association. There we can read about aspects of global control of products and uh, equipment. So for classical scintigraphic pharma radio pharmaceuticals, uh, we can see what aspects are controlled. That is, uh, quality control for staff, because the staff has to be adequately trained and meet certain professional requirements. Uh, they have to be trained in uh, different stages of uh, radio pharmaceutical manufacturing and control. Also, we have here the control of uh, equipment and facilities, also quality control for radiological con uh, protection or for the manufacturing area, but also quality control of the product. That's all uh, laid down in the manufacturing good practice from 
promoted by Polish uh, Association or European Association. Similarly to generator manufacturing, we have quality control for PET uh, radium mm, pharmaceutical control. And again, we have areas that have to be covered by this quality control. But uh, in these areas, there are lots of aspects and procedures that have to be tested uh, duly and controlled and also archived. At the same time, it's almost at the end of my presentation, I'd like to tell you that BSS directive obliges to include the dosage, uh, the, the dose uh, used in diagnostic and therapeutical procedures in the patient's files. So here we come to the quantification of uh, tests in nuclear medicine, that is quality control should cover these parameters that have direct impact upon these estimates. So here, because uh, the equipment is increasingly more modern, so these measurements are taken automatically or semi-automatically but this, uh, so this tests uh, of uh, dosage, doses that, that have been accumulated in a patient's body have to be monitored. And this is for sure uh, also something that we will be looking into in the future. I've been trying to show you the problem of quality control from the perspective of the performer or, or the organizer of, uh, of, of some, or somebody who organizes work in such centers. I've uh, told you about problems, logistic problems, personal problems, uh, uh, that are encountered by these nuclear medicine centers. But uh, formally, uh, there is no difference between uh, classic uh, and pet uh, medicine, uh, pet, pet approach in nuclear medicine. And, and the same is translated and reflected in the manufacturing of radio pharmaceuticals. And that is understandable because uh, mm -hmm close to zero danger resulting from reasonable use of radio pharmaceuticals uh, is the same and, and that's, that explains why there is no different, uh, differentiation between these two types of um, nuclear medicine systems. Thank you very much. Um, uh, well, thank you very much. This is as much as I could say about the subject allocated to me. Well, I, I, I hope uh, that it wasn't uh, too much against what you wanted to share with us. But 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 I but I think that that no 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 not at all. But I think that we have to be quite precise among ourselves about what we are talking about because what we heard during the previous presentation that is in general. very precise and uh, uniform testing uh, that is in conformity with uh, NOMA regulations should be followed in each center for us to speak with one and with one voice and and to to use it, to be able to use the same language Yes, Professor, thank you. Thank you very much for this very detailed analysis of the currently binding atomic 
law, but a few comments on my side when it comes to the estimate to those estimation that there is a general rule resulting from atomic law and it's binding upon all areas of medicine wherever ionizing radiation is used. Maybe it's not a dose, uh, but parameters that, that allow uh, estimating this dose. So, so, so that's why I refer to atomic law which identifies it indirectly because it's not specified in this part of, of part of the law that refers to nuclear medicine no no but ionizing radiation in medicine and another aspect that I would like to expand on because again today we've heard it almost in every presentation good practices and their relation to law to regulations and the role of national societies, national association in promoting good practices and in the creation of law. And you have very rightly suggested, Professor, that diagnostic monitors that are used in nuclear medicine, but they are not regulated by the currently binding law. There are basic tests for PET but no specialist tests. The problem is that this regulation comes from 2017. When we were working on it, we couldn't find such uh, recommendations, international recommendations, although I myself, I would prefer to have uh, recommendations by Polish Society of Nuclear Medicine, medicine I'm sorry, or uh, that would tell us that tests uh, should that quality control tests should be performed this way or that way? We, we, we couldn't make a list of specialist tests for pets at that time. What we can find in the regulations, this is our duty, this is our obligation. We cannot put anything there. We, when we speak about good practices, we can say, well, this is it works this way. Uh, here and that and, and in another way uh, in another way somewhere else because this is good practice okay and we can live with that but whatever goes into law then mm, it's 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 set in stone so so that's the problem so in the national center we are trying to arrive at a situation whereby we'd like to shift most of it into the into the area of good practices you also uh, mentioned uh, measurement uh, consistency and nothing more and and we had long discussions what should be put there the more we were putting into law the more was left outside of it so the role of the Polish Association of Nuclear Medicine to me is paramount. It's, it's, it's fundamental in it because for, for um, radio safety or, uh, of our, of our uh, patients. So I'd like to stress once more again the role of the Polish, Polish Association also of uh, medical physics and I hope, I do believe, that as a result of this project, new reports will be presented or new publications of the Polish Association of Nuclear Medicine that would be then uh, transferred to the Minister of Health. Soon we'll be working on the new uh, regulation on tests. Uh, there will be th there are new tests, specialist tests in the pipeline uh, related to PET. And the development of nuclear medicine and, and, and anything where we have medical imaging, uh, the progress is so fast that if we don't have good practice, we, we will not able, be able to, 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 to carry on. Good practices are not very popular because the, 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 this is not regulation. Uh, and what we really control when it comes to conformity is conformity with regulations, while the approach to good practices is not 
not uh, as I would like it to have. When clinical audit starts, those mentioned by Professor Opłachcińska, this good practice will be introduced. Yes, but, but what, what, what I would like to stress strongly is the fact that, for example, NOMA standards or recommendations of the European Association, well, in accordance with our law, and our legislation, and I have demonstrated that, it's not, we cannot say that these are NEMA standards, so they are not ours. Our law, I showed it on one of our slides, uh, obliges us to follow these standards and to, to observe them. So even if uh, it's not stated explicitly in the regulation, but it's still in the standards, we should observe them and we should comply with them. That's why uh, in my center, uh, monitors are tested regularly. Uh, we draw up reports uh, as uh, always after each test and then they are included into the documentation of our center. So, so, so these things are being done. So, so it's not that we are saying, well, either I will stick to it or not. We are generally obliged to stick to these norms. That, that was the idea behind, behind this, this provision. We, I must say that we had a lot of problems to keep this provision in the regulation. I'm not sure whether it will survive in the next amendment, amend, in, in the next amended version, because it makes refer, it, it's not very precise, but the more precise the wording, the less chances in, it stands to, to work and, and to survive, yeah, because then it also becomes completely I illegible. Well, are there any hands raised? Yes, Professor Anna Płachcińska. Piotr, could you please give the floor to Professor Płachcińska? Uh, could you please activate your mic? Yes, okay. I can, see, yes, 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 I've succeeded in it. Yeah, I also managed to raise my hand virtually. Well, I have some comments. Well, good practice, unfortunately, good practices don't work uh, in our country. And the example, well, clinical audits are an example. We have all regulations and there is funding that is uh, ensured um, in the atomic law, but unfortunately uh, good practices don't exist and they exist neither in nuclear medicine, in radiotherapy and radiological uh, diagnostic. I've spoken to my colleagues uh, from other fields. And um, when it comes to practice going ahead of the law, but there is one uh, exception that is the duty to report therapeutic doses in nuclear medicine. That will be a huge problem uh, for different, for different th therapies because it's not so simple. Uh, it's not like in radiotherapy that you can read uh, the, 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 the size of, dose, of the dose, but you need to have models and you have to make calculations which are quite complex. And most of these centers which carry out these therapies, they don't have it. So they just report some kind of activity, always the same, nobody bothers with, cal with calculating these doses. But I can understand it because it's really time consuming. It's a very time consuming practice. But I'd like to support Professor Brajewicz when it comes to the specialist tests uh, and the need to validate them 
by external specialists. That's very difficult, that's hard to understand. People come, they don't know the equipment which is in a specific center. Uh, we don't know how to do it, how, and this is a kind, uh, that, that's quite a painful provision to us. Yes, I fully agree with that. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, yeah, I'm back. Well, in in general, I agree with with, with what Professor Płachciska has just said. Yeah, I understand, uh, I, and I, I don't see any problem and discrepancy here because when we speak about specialist tests, about uh, comparative tests. Uh, so laboratories which do it, or commercial laboratories, mm -hmm. uh, maybe radiotherapy, that's, that's uh, another uh, issue. Uh, but uh, when it comes to diagnostics and interventional uh, <coughs> radiology, tests are prepared in such a way that they should be independent of uh, manufacturer of the equipment and all settings uh, of the equipment are done locally by people who use this equipment so I don't see any problem connected with these comparative uh, tests. So we can discuss whether all of them should be performed or, or not all of them but that is uh, that to some extent reflects the way uh, how it is done by accredited laboratories why two different teams should work on the same equipment in order to ensure consistency, repeatability, stability. You also drew, have drawn our attention to the fact that it's not uh, specified precisely in the provisions, but that's because we wanted to leave the room for maneuver. We don't want to specify how it should be done. This, this should be perhaps uh, specified. Uh, we've left the details for the Polish Association of uh, Nuclear Medicine. Law provides some background for what we expect. We expect comparative tests. Uh, if they are... Well, measurements were made internally, locally, they can show perfect performance, but they may be biased with a really significant uh, systematic error, which will never be identified without comparative tests. That's, why, that, 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 that's, that's the goal of this provision, and, it, and it's quite clear. And another thing, well, I, I, I think we, 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 we've covered most of it. Yes, director. I have to switch off because at six, at, at four, I'm sorry, at four p.m. I start. Uh, uh, PhD graduation uh, uh, defense. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for your critical approach to these provisions. I do hope that some aspects have been clarified, but there is a lot more to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If Professor Płachczyńska would still like to take the floor. Yes, yes, please leave your hand raised. If not, could you please cancel it? If any of the participants would like to take the floor, then the floor is yours, of course. And, but pre please raise your virtual hands. I can see a question on the chat box. Just a second, I'll try and show it. Uh, 
is the term daily that we can see in the regulation? Should, shouldn't the term referring to that frequency daily, shouldn't it be replaced with the term on the day of the examination? Well, uh, we worked on this regulation back in 2016, four years ago. Of course, it's high time for us to to amend this regulation, to update it or to supplement it. I will be encouraging you to get involved in the process. So whether the, the term used for frequency should be daily or on the day of the examination, it, it, it's a valid question. So, and I'd like, and, and I would be very much obliged if you could uh, get involved in, uh, actively in it when we are working on this regulation and, and, uh, and you'll be informed about it. Professor Płachcińska is still... Just a second, yes. No, 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 no. Professor Płachcińska is not there anymore. No. Professor Małkowski, would you like to take the floor just for a second? Professor, would you like to take the floor? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, oh, when listening to you, when, when listening to these presentations and comments, uh, I, well, all of us have realized how wide area we are dealing with and, and, an, are, and an area uh, which is not very precisely identified, when on the one hand you are right, uh, Director, uh, s uh, in saying that uh, striving to develop good practices should be um, our regular practice, uh, b b because our people, our staff should feel that this is h how it should be done, because we are do it, uh, doing it for the sake of our patients, but also for the sake of ourselves, to protect ourselves. But on the other hand, when we don't know uh, what the problem is about, it's usually about money. Uh, we are working under, uh, within a certain system where money is also informed and what is not specified in law, uh, then our superiors, our employ employers say, um, well, it's, that it's not required by law, so why should we spend money on it? And then we start free riding. Um, and um, and it's not always and, and, and by costs I don't mean our remuneration or our salaries, but also funding necessary to support certain organizational changes. So I believe that it's a very wide area, uh, which is why also you will have a lot of work, Director, in, in the years to come. Thank you, thank you very much for this reassurance. I'm not sure what's the view and perspective of the Minister of Health. Of course, yes, you are right, but I think that unless we start discussing good practices and uh, unless we start putting these good practices in place, unless we start changing our mindset and our approach to good uh, practices, nothing will change. Because either we have this mentality of uh, observing just uh, strictly binding legal provisions and, uh, uh, and, and nothing else, uh, uh, and we are trying to please both sides, and then when developing further regulations, we 
uh, those who develop these regulations are pressed on to include as much in these regulations as possible. And atomic law is a good example of that. If uh, uh, there is anything that doesn't feature in other regulations, then let's put it into the atomic law uh, act. There was a moment when atomic law act uh, uh, could uh, also include uh, laws and provisions and, and regulations for the profession of a medical doctor. And that's not what it is all about. It's only about uh, using uh, nuclear aspects uh, of, of medicine for the safety of the patients. What I miss the most, and it's not only, and, and I'm speaking it, it not, not only for nuclear medicine, but for other areas also. I, I, I think there is a big gap in the cooperation from the side of associations, societies, uh, scientific so societies and associations that could produce publications that could be used by ourselves. When it comes to money, your reports your publications, your documents could be translated into regulations of acts and also they would identify uh, areas which should get, uh, should also receive funding to uh, to ensure changes. Yes, 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 that, that's true, you are absolutely right. But uh, how big uh, this uh, yeah gradually we can we can o o of course achieve something but how big this pressure must be well we have on the one hand we have excellent tools but on the other hand these tools are so sensitive to external impacts and also to internal complexity of the equipment that they need to be controlled so that the end result for the for the patient uh, um, were uh, reliable in terms of uh, information, but also safe. I do hope that next year, when we are uh, when we are summarizing this project, we'll be able to come up with a document or material that uh, will help to introduce and disseminate these good practices. I hope that next year, by the end of May, we will not be restricted so much by the COVID pandemic and that we will be able to meet in Białystok and we will have a bigger forum for discussion and there will be more people participating. Uh, in the process. Thank you, thank you very much, Professor. Thank you for your comment. Are there any more people willing to take the floor? I'm looking and no, that's not the case. Just a second. Yeah, I can see that Mario Marengo is writing to us. Uh, let's uh, wait for a while before we close uh, today's event. In the meantime, please forgive me uh, if uh, there were some problems during uh, the meeting. Piotr, could you please display this comment or question? We talk a lot on the uh, Polish regulations, uh, 
according to quality control quality assurance and we see it that it's a little bit uh, over regulated uh, but we are working on it this uh, meeting this project is one of the steps ahead of this yeah thank you very much for for your comment Mario, if you would like, uh, Peter, uh, may you switch on Mario to see him? Any problem with the connection? Mario, niestety, nie ma dostępu do mikrofonu i kamery w tej chwili. To a microphone and camera. Oh, oh. okay, that, that, that's the problem. Uh, Mario, uh, thank you very much for uh, your uh, comment and that you stay with us at the end. Uh, I hope that the translation was. Uh, good enough to understand the problems we are facing. Uh, your comments said that uh, I'm right. And uh, I would like to invite you for tomorrow. I understand you start the, present, uh, the presentation at 10.05 tomorrow. So thank you very much uh, for you. Thank you very much for all uh, IEA uh, staff we, uh, who joined us during this meeting and uh, going to Polish, into Polish. Thank you. Thank you all for taking part uh, in this first day of our meeting. I hope we didn't have too many problems. I hope it was all right. Although, to me, it's completely new situation uh, to uh, deliver, to, to, to chair this uh, conference remotely, but I hope uh, that I was quite successful. I can see that Director Agnieszka Strzemieczna, uh, I, I think that she would like to say something, or maybe I'm wrong. the Chief Sanitary Inspectorate. Is there a contribution from the Chief Sanitary Inspectorate? I'm not sure. Is this possible, Piotr? We are waiting for the connection. Uh, I have uh, given uh, the right to director to uh, speak to us. Piotr, maybe we could see you, since we cannot get the connection with Director Agnieszka Strzemieczna today. Uh, well, we are going to close the meeting. Thank you, Peter, uh, for helping us. I hope that uh, it uh, hasn't been spread into bits, not even bytes. There, was, there were no problems with the pixel size internet has not sucked us in. Thank you for all the participants. Thank you to all the speakers. Uh, 
thank you to the participants who are viewing us via I, uh, so we are going to see you tomorrow at 10 the platform will be open at 9 so thank you see you tomorrow have a nice and healthy evening and I hope that uh, the next evenings and days will be uh, healthy